order. Can we please start with a roll call? You bet. Mayor Bagley. Here. Council Member Christensen. Here. Council Member Hidalgo Faring. Here. Council Member Martin. Here. Council Member Peck. Here. Council Member Rodriguez. Here. And Council Member Waters. Here. Mayor, you have a quorum. All right. Um, let's go ahead and say the pledge. Marcia, do you want to lead us, please? No, but I will. Thank you. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of, the of the United States, States of, America, of America and to, and the, to the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. all. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Martin. All right. Just a quick reminder by the chair. Anyone wishing to provide uh, public comment during first call public invited to be heard. Uh, that's item seven. Um, we will, or also in, in item, under item nine, the public hearing se se sections for ordinances to be read and adopted on second reading. Um, must watch the live stream of the meeting for instructions. You'll see them currently on the screen in front of you right now. When the call-in information is displayed on the screen like you're seeing, please call the number displayed, enter the message ID, and when asked for your participant ID, just go ahead and press the pound key, and then you'll hear a confirmation, and then you'll be told how many people are in there, how long the line is, and then you'll be called into the room based on the last three or four uh, numbers of your, of, of your phone number. So, um, and then when you get in there, go ahead and state your name and your address for the record, and you'll have three minutes. And uh, unfortunately, as we all know, um, no matter how awesome your comments, I'll need to cut you off at three minutes. All right, do I have a motion for section four, approval of minutes? Do I have a motion to approve the August 11th, 2020 regular session minutes? So moved. Second. I will set. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, and then by the way, I'm not, I usually don't ask for debate because I can see everybody. If I miss somebody, just wave stronger. All right, uh, number five, any agenda revisions, Harold? No, correct, haven't gotten anything. All right, uh, motions to direct the city manager to add agenda items to future agendas, anybody? All right, great. Then let's go ahead and move on to Harold, your COVID-19 update. I'm sorry, Polly, did you wave your hand? Uh, yes. All right, Council Member Christensen. Okay. Uh, tonight we had an executive session called by the mayor, which was a very good and fruitful discussion. Um, however, we also received a letter from the mayor this week um, in which he um, gave us seven presentations that he wants and he wants them to take precedence over anything that else that uh, city council has said before or in the future. And I object to that. And I think this was an issue that we need to discuss. The form of governance chosen by the voters of Longmont was the council manager system. This has worked well for Longmont for decades and we should uphold this form of governance and its principles. The guiding principle of the city council is that city council as a body sets policy and hires the city manager, the city attorney and the municipal judge. These three administrators implement and run their departments without council interference. In addition, we've given the city manager emergency powers during this time of pandemic. More than ever, it's important to respect his time and his duties, one of which is to set the agenda and to determine how many additional reports the staff can handle. Council may by majority vote, uh, augment or modify the agenda. The mayor by council rules of procedure, not city charter, may also augment or modify the agenda. In the council manager system of governance, the mayor has no veto power and must act with the consent of council. To assert that the mayor may add seven reports and discussions that have not been publicly discussed or approved and that they must take priority over anything council has previously or in the future discussed and approved by majority vote constitutes a veto of council. And in undermines both public discussion and the ability of council to act as a body. Um, I would move that we clarify this in the council rules of procedure to 
<clears throat> and have a future discussion about that. All right. The Do motion, I have a second? Hold on. The motion's out of order. It was two parts. Do you want to go ahead and restate your motion, Polly? Okay. Would, so right. So currently, right now, pursuant to rules, the rules of procedure, uh, we are accepting motions to direct the city manager to add agenda items to future agendas. Would you like to post something or propose a motion to put something on a future agenda item, not currently for discussion? Yes, I would like to, for the future, as soon as possible, to add to the agenda that we discuss the council rules of procedure. Perfect. Do we have a second? Sure, I'll second that. All right. The motion has been moved and seconded. It's now open for debate. Councilor Martin. Um, I think that uh, the system, the template for city government that is cited is not stated anywhere in the city charter or the council rules of procedure. Uh, and, and which do say that actually the mayor is second in line for putting things on the agenda and the council is third in line um, for putting things on the agenda. Uh, we haven't had any trouble with that in the past and I don't understand what the purpose is in um, amending the rules now. And I guess, and I guess the, uh, and I guess, my, I guess I'll weigh in. The um, I've been on city council now for almost nine years. I was mayor for two two years. <laughs> Sorry, hold on one second. Give, give me thirty seconds. I'm going to put the dog in the room because this. All right, sorry about that. Marsha, my pit bull didn't like what you had to say. Sorry about that. No, the, uh, so what I was gonna say is I was, so I've been on city council now for nine years, uh, three of which were as mayor. And uh, I would, this is a rhetorical question. Um, I would like anyone to mention at any time when I have ever thwarted through my city council or mayor, mayoral position, any, any direction that I didn't agree with on this council. I have been nothing but patient and understanding that um, my view isn't the right one, always. I listen, my, I view my job as mayor is to listen to the four people on council and their direction. My job is to help facilitate good law. That is how I have acted as mayor, um, even when I didn't agree with it. This is the first time, even though the, the city council and the city charter and the city uh, policies and, the, and procedures state that I have the authority and power to do so, this is the first time that I have exercised that power ever. And, um, and everybody here knows me well enough to know that I usually do things um, to prove a point. The point I'm making here is that a couple of them, one, um, I don't fight politically with my, I mean, I don't want to fight politically with my council members. Um, but at the same time, I do not want to get distracted and bogged down by personalities. And so right now, the seven things that I listed on that agenda are things that are currently important to the city. Things that Harold has mentioned, things that Eugene has mentioned, things that city staff has mentioned, and I have been quiet and I have waited for city council and I've let city council do whatever they've wanted for the last nine months in the second term as mayor. Um, and so all I'm doing is exercising what, what, the, what I am allowed to do. Um, I believe nothing is inappropriate. I can augment and change that agenda. And people might not like it, but the solution is either change the charter or run somebody against me in 18 months should I choose to run again. But I have that power and authority. And oftentimes, uh, this city council will say things stating, well, the mayor can't. Well, I can. 
And so in this particular case, I'm not thwarting or vetoing anything anyone has done. It's just that there are things that we need to address that need to get addressed. And so um, that's it. I didn't give Harold a timeline. I didn't say do this right now. These are just things we need to get to. And a lot of times we don't have an opportunity to get to things and we're here at 11 o'clock and we still aren't getting to the things that I believe city staff thinks we need to get to. So that is the reason why I stated it. Councilmember Christensen. Mayor Bagley, this is not an attack on you personally. This is a, upholding the principle of the fact that the mayor is under this form of government that we receive information in our uh, orientation packet and information is available on the uh, <clears throat> council and manager system all over. About 50% of the communities in the United States use it. And the rules are very clear that mayor has no veto power, that the mayor has uh, acts as a body with consent of council. I don't object to any of, I don't object to most of the things that you put on that list. I just want a public discussion and a public vote on it. That's all, because that is the principle of the kind of government that this, the residents of this town voted for decades ago, which is council and manager system, not and, mayor and council system. And, and nothing, and, and I that's agree. that's all I'm asking for. And, I and, will, the, the, I, go ahead, and sorry, the charter on. does not grant you that authority. It's the rules of procedure that grant you that authority to amend, um, and, and to amend, uh, and it does not give priority as Councilwoman Martin stated that the, that, um, that the city manager has the first priority, the mayor has the second priority, and the, the council has the third priority. It simply says that any that the, the city manager sets the agenda and the mayor or city council can amend it. However, my objection is that we need to amend it with the public discussion, that's all, and a public vote. And, and, I, and I agree. I guess what I'm saying is that the, uh, I guess all I'm saying is I'm gonna vote against it, Again, only because name one time, I didn't pull Metro districts from the agenda. There were council members that wanted me to, but I could have, but, but my point is I'm not, I'm not abusing my power. I'm only doing currently what I am per permitted to do by law. As the chair of the meeting, I have never ever silenced any of what some might view as my political adversaries. I've always been quite open to making sure everybody gets stated what they have to say, um, even when it might be to my detriment. And so in this particular case, people can vote to tell me not to do a certain thing, but I will, I am, I can do what I want um, as far as the charter and the city uh, uh, rule, city council rules and procedures allow me to. So we can have a discussion, we can have votes, but um, I will continue to exercise. And it's not just me. Um, at some point, maybe somebody on this council will be mayor. Let's suppose Aaron Rodriguez runs next term and he's the mayor now. It's not just me. It's going to be whoever's next. So council member Waters. Yeah, I just, uh, just to clarify the motion, it, it, the motion is to review the council rules of procedure with the intent that we would modify them potentially. The, um, I'm sorry, do I, have permit, do I have permission to answer, Mayor Bagley? Yeah, you have the floor, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, the intent is to clarify um, what modification and augment mean in the council rules and procedure. That's where we are given, all of us given the authority to augment and modify the agenda. So just- And I, I think it needs clarification because it, it isn't, it's, it's vague, and that's often a very good idea, but not in this I, case, I don't think. For whatever it's worth, um, having having gone back and reviewed the charter and rule reviewed then rules of procedure and item number seven or rule procedure number rule number seven, I guess, in terms of agenda preparation, I think what Councilmember Martin commented on, I, I think that's the way it's spelled out. I, I think it's pretty clear the the order in terms of um, who has sway or authority over, you know, under the current rules. So um, 
if the intent is to try to change the rules, that's one thing. If it's I, if it if it's to clarify, I think it, personally, I think it's good. It's pretty clear right now. I can like it or not like it, um, but but it, 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 I'm going to vote against the motion just because I don't think they need clarification. I think they're clear. If that's the intent of the the motion, Councilor Peck. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. I think. Um, what the way I understand it is that we have in our agenda a place where we direct staff to add things to the uh, future agendas. And that wasn't done. We were just sent a list of things. Therefore, it wasn't transparent in the meeting that anyone wanted to change the agenda or to redirect staff. And that that is where my confusion is, is that if we have a place in the agenda to say, let's direct staff to take this uh, item off the agenda and add this because it's of more importance, or and then we get to vote on that. I think as far as the rules of procedure, as far as our agenda went, that's what I think should happen instead of just getting an email saying, uh, even though you all voted on this to put it on the agenda, I'm going to say we're not going to do that. So um, if we are going to continue with this, I want to know what we're taking off the agenda that we've so, already, by majority, put on. So no, at no point have I ever instructed city staff to take anything off the agenda that city council has said to put on the agenda. I could argue that I'm allowed to augment it. You guys can make a vote all you want, and I can turn around and augment, take off, and adjust. I don't do that. Legally, I could. But I do not do that. Um, the other thing is that when I have a conversation with Harold um, before COVID, it was a weekly thing. We're always talking. The mayor and the city, the city manager are always talking. As the chair of this meeting, we're trying to find a way to make sure we're not here all day and night and week. We are always putting things on the agenda and off the agenda. And so it's not about, and the only reason why we do this is because there's a Robert, according to, again, council rules and procedures, it is not permitted in, in mayor and council comments to raise something and, and have a, raise a motion and have a vote on it. So we put it at the beginning of the meeting so that it wasn't a, a surprise. It is not common practice for this council um, to, to dictate the agendas by majority. You can augment, you can change, you can direct, but it, that, that's not it. City manager does that. And then I augment, or the mayor augments or adjusts. And then, um, and so, uh, and so, uh, and again, I'm just pointing out again, I have never, ever, ever abused that authority. Councilmember Martin. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. I just think that it's a very, I mean, the, the thing that the, the email that the mayor sent out didn't have anything to do with the agenda. He was asking for our feedback on the individual items in the email. However, um, I think it's a bad precedent to uh, say that the council has to vote on the mayor's agenda additions um, uh, against the language in the rules of procedure now. I mean, will we then decide that the council gets to vote on everything the city manager puts on the agenda too? Um, uh, we can ask the, um, we can ask the city clerk to read us that paragraph in the, in the uh, rules and procedures, but I would rather we didn't do that unless we get four votes to consider this. You also have to, you, you also have to keep in mind, I did not have to send that email. Nowhere does it say that I need to tell you guys what I direct the city manager to do, ever. As the mayor, I can augment, period, full stop. Um, and so I didn't have to tell any of you anything. I did it out of respect and transparency. And those are things that I believe that we need to address. So I don't get a veto, but as mayor in my position, I am allowed to put things on the agenda that I feel are important. And I do believe that most people would agree on this council that those seven things are important. And so I instructed Harold to get them on the agenda as soon as possible. And um, if there's something that Harold feels that we need to address before that, 
like I said, our phone lines are open and I'm sure that he will let me know. He has even said, Brian, don't take that off or Brian, don't do that. We really need an answer here. And I listen and I also listen to my council members. So if there's a motion on the floor. I don't see any other hands up. Let's go ahead and vote. The motion is to have a future discussion about council rules and procedures pertaining to the setting of agendas and augmenting the agendas. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. 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 All right. I didn't. Susie, how did you vote? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said nay. Just All right. Because at this time we have a lot going on. All right. So the the, the motion fails uh, five to two with council members Christensen and Peck against. All right. Thank you. Is there anything else that we'd like to do to direct the city manager um, to put on a, a future agenda? All right, seeing nothing, let's go ahead. Harold, now you can do your COVID-19 update. Um, so I'm gonna show you a couple of slides real quick just to continue keeping consistent um, uh, data coming forward. I'm not gonna do as many as I normally do. Which uh, screen are you seeing? The cases by uh, Colorado.gov. Okay. So, um, Susan, if you don't see it, tell me because they changed their website. And so now I have to go into different tabs. So this is the information in terms of where we are at the state level. Um, you can see um, this peak that you were seeing earlier. Uh, the good news is we tend to be on that downward trend. If you go to the state website with CDPHE, one of the things I will say, um, they've just changed it. And so instead of having it on one page where you can see all the graphs, you'll need to move through it and click on different screens. So it looks like this. So if you want the case summary, you have to pick this one and you can move through and get more information. It also um, gives you the counts and you can dig into it in a different way. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you, and this is what you keep hearing people talk about in terms of the percent positive on the PCR. Um, so you can see at this point, once they were really generating a lot of tests for the state, it was at 5.43 um, today, or the most recent number, it's at 2.94. So again, when you look at the number of tests they're doing and where they're seeing on the PCR, that's that's some um, good information um, for us to continue watching. In terms of Boulder County, uh, their website has continued to be pretty consistent, which is a good thing as, as you're trying to track and, and watch the numbers. So. This is a number of Boulder County residents that have um, been uh, positive by date. Again, you can see the peak down, had a couple of peaks, but then trended down pretty quickly. Um, the thing that's really important, so the overall PCR test, again, overall means from the beginning, it's at 4.28%. The current five-day average is at 2.1%. Actually, at one point late last week, it got a little below 2%. Um, this is the rolling average of positive uh, PCR test when you see that over time. So you're seeing some consistency. This is when it dipped a little below 2%. Um, again, this is really just to continue showing council how many tests they're actually able to perform. I know there were questions about this and you can see that there have been days that they've hit 700. Uh, what's good is on those days, the number of positives has still been lower than it was when they were doing less than 500 tests. Um, there's a graph that I want to make sure I can find it for you all. My website just went wonky on me. Um, again, 20 to 29 year olds continue to be um, the highest number of cases that we have in Boulder County. Uh, this is a graph I wanted to show you. So this is the five day average. And so you see this big peak here and then we dropped and then we were just moving up and down and it was, but it was still trending upwards. We had another drop, um, you know, I think the, you know, again, what's positive is that you see this, you know, we went back up, but then we trended down again. I think the thing that everybody's really watching in terms of the caseloads, and this is when you look at what we have in Longmont versus Boulder at 846, um, is really what's gonna happen um, in terms of the, um, what's gonna happen in terms of the college students coming back. Um, I know that's been a, a significant uh, topic of conversation in the GIS and, and Marika's updates that she provides me 
um, on Tuesday and Thursday. And if you've seen the the some of the news stories, um, again, there was one last night about the number of parties and where people were interacting. So something everyone's watching. When you look at the hospital numbers, um, again, everything seems to be in pretty good shape. The ICU number. Um, when you, when you bring it out is, is in yellow, which is, is good based on what they're having. This is a number that continues to be in red, but again, it's med surge beds and, we're, and that's based on the elective procedure still being performed. Um, so what I wanted to say to council is everyone's still really watching the numbers and what that's gonna look like. The one thing I did wanna to talk to council about today, um, I did send you all uh, an email to, to the council regarding some information that I received from Jeff Zayak. And, um, and really, and what he said in, in, in that email was that based on where they are right now and what they're looking at, they're still strongly recommending that city council stay in the, uh, city council and board meetings stay in the virtual format um, based on the caseloads. Uh, part, a lot of, part of that, if you remember from the email, was really talking about the fact that we're heading into fall, we're heading into flu season, um, currently, right now, they're also monitoring West Nile. Um, so there's a lot of things in play that they're looking at. And so his recommendation at this point is that we continue to stay remotely for both city council and board meetings, unless there's something that comes up where we uh, just can't um, accomplish that in its current structure. And then they're continuing to watch what that looks like in terms of um, how we move in to protect our neighbor. The last update that I saw, I just got one earlier today and I haven't seen it uh, from, from Jeff, but I think we were, we had met four of the criteria and we had cost and we were almost meeting another four. So we haven't met all of the criteria in terms of moving in to um, protect our neighbor. So that's probably the big news that we have at this point. Um, if there's any questions generally about COVID and where we are and, and what we're trying to do, I'll be happy to answer those questions to save you all some time. Anybody? Uh, Councilmember Member Lago Faring. So, um, yeah, I have, so with the Protect Our Neighbor, can, is, is it that counties can open to that level or does it have to be statewide? Counties or regions can open, can, can, can make the move in to protect our neighbor, but, and there's a but, the county can't do it unilaterally. The county has to get um, emergency managers, um, cities, so I would be involved in that conversation. So everyone has to come together and agree that you can move in to protect our neighbor. Um, the other option that they can look at is you could do it by region. So theoretically, Larimer, Boulder um, could go together and do a regional opening if everyone met the criteria. But, okay. but there's a lot of people that have to sign off on it, public health directors, so on and so forth. Okay, so then in the case for us, Longmont and St. Brain, because we have a portion of our region that is in Weld County, would that, how would that impact moving forward in that regard? So slightly different question because so what would happen is we would really be concerned with what's happening within um, the Boulder County um, area. Mm -hmm. And so for the schools that, that would fall in Weld County, that would have to be a different conversation with Weld County. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then the school would then have to, I, I guess, make a decision. Do they go with this in this area and then in this in this area or do they stay with the most strict? And I think, you know, there were some of those things that Jeff talked about that was actually occurring where they were saying, we're, we're going to stay in, in this arena with the most strict guidelines. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's, it's, it's not by, it is not by um, school district boundaries, it's county boundaries. County boundaries and not even city boundaries. Right. Okay. And then. And so just so you know, I just pulled up that. So out of nine total um, protect our neighbor metrics. We have six met and three partially met for Boulder County. Three partially met. Okay. And in nine total. Thanks. That was it. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else? Okay, Harold, what else do you have for us? So uh, just based on what we have and the information from Jeff, I'm going to continue as, as council, as we all talked about early on in this, listening to the public health director and taking that directive in terms of meetings and then we'll be communicating with you all in terms of 
the, the um, recommendations that we're receiving from uh, the public health director. If that's a, okay, we'll just continue down this, this format. I think uh, you're keeping our city safe. Keep our good. Anybody else from your staff? Are we good today? We're good. Great. All right, let's move on to uh, special reports and presentations. Proclamation does, you know what? I just realized, hold on, my medication alarm's going off. Um, I just realized I didn't know how to copy of that proclamation to read. The, um, could I get that sent to me real quick? Give me just one moment, Mayor. Great, thank you. Uh, let's, let's, Mayor? Yeah, let's go ahead. Sorry. Are you, are, if, if you're looking at that in that live meeting, uh -huh. it, there is a, there's a download. If, yep, if yep. you've got that open. I don't, have, it, it's, it's shut, it locked up on me. Let's go ahead and do first call public invited to be heard first. And then if you go ahead and mail that to me, we'll pick up that when we're, when we're done with first call. Mayor, I just sent it. If you want to go ahead and go for that, go for the all proclamation. Right. Hold on Up one to you. Second. That's all right. All right, it's still not coming in. Let's do first call and then uh, we'll go ahead and deal with that after. And I'm sure it's just my, my email system or my, my internet. So let's go ahead and do first call and then we'll return to this. So let's go ahead and take a brief break. Let's take three minutes and then come back when everybody's in the room, all right? For the caller that we just led into this meeting, we're taking a short break for public invited to be heard, and then we will take the callers in the order that they show up. Thanks.
Don, are you here? Get back online and do first call public invited to be heard, and then we'll. I've got the proclamation, so it shouldn't take too long. Mayor, if you wouldn't mind holding for just a, another 30 seconds to a minute on that, we were a little bit late in unlocking as we put that first slide up. So I think a couple of council members have gotten a message hey, it's locked, it's now unlocked, so people should call in. All right, are we ready to go? Council Member Lago Ferry? Yeah, I received a text that there were about three people who were trying to call in and they got kicked out and now they're trying to call back, but they need the slide for the number and ID and all that. Let's go ahead and throw that up and take another two or three minutes. Yeah, I'm
Denise. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Mayor, I'm going to stop sharing my slide and then we'll wait another 30 seconds for it to disappear from the live stream. Sounds great. And it looks like we've got over 10, so it will take a few minutes to get through all of them. For the callers that we've just welcomed to the meeting, you will be called upon by the last three digits of your phone number. I will unmute you and ask you to speak, say your name and state your address before you speak and you will have three minutes. All right, it looks like the slide has left the live stream. I'm ready to begin when you are, Mayor. All right, let's go ahead and start. The first caller. How many, are, phone... how many, how many are in the queue? I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right. Just want us to know what to look forward to. Let's go. Okay. The first caller I'm going to ask to unmute is um, one two zero. Your phone number ends in one two zero. Can you unmute yourself, please, and state your name and address? Caller 120, can you please um, unmute yourself? There you go. Can you hear us? Okay. Yes, I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? I'm assuming yeah. you can. Yes. Please awesome. make sure you're, you've uh, muted the live stream. I think that's what the delay is. Yes, I have done that. Okay. Awesome. So my name is Rebecca Fenton, and I live at 535 Deerwood uh, Drive in Longmont, Colorado. You may begin. Oh, and then, thank you so much. So I am part of a group called the Boulder County Collective, and we have a few demands talking about um, equity in our schools. So I am a teacher, and uh, yeah, so I apologize. So one of the things that we'd like to demand um, is having our SROs um, no longer be a part of the school community. Another thing that we would like is for um, accurate portrayals of history to be um, shown in history books. And um, yeah, those are those are the top two right now. All right, thank. You. Is that it? Um, okay, okay. Sorry, I found this. Can I can I finish two more? Books? Yeah, I really absolutely. No, keep going. You've got time. Okay, thank you so much. So we'd also like to swiftly institute occupational training to mitigate the effects of socioeconomic disparities to which um, BIPOC, which are Black and Indigenous people of color and their communities are most susceptible. And finally, we'd like to institute with haste programs to teach critical life skills such as financial literacy, mindfulness, and courageous conversations about race. That is all. Thank you very much. Okay, next caller. The next caller, your phone number ends in 466. 
466. Can you please unmute yourself? Caller that ends in 466. Can you hear me okay? We sure can. Go ahead and stop listening to the live stream because we will be able to hear ourselves delayed in your your audio. Yeah. Next caller, okay. your phone number ends in. Okay. Uh, this is Judith Blackburn. I live at 3724 Oakwood Drive in Longmont. Good evening, council members and Mayor Bailey uh, Bagley. I am one person with two topics and three minutes, so I'll get right to it. First topic has to do with PRPA and our uh, plan, IRP they call it, integrated plan for moving into the future. Um, I'm having trouble hearing myself because I, I have not been able to turn off the... Yeah, turn, can you turn? Yeah, can you turn? Take a moment and turn off the live stream, please, Judith. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to mute this, so I'm going to try and hide it. Anyway, I'm concerned about the PRPA IRP or Integrated Plan moving forward. That um, the four choices we were given on March 4th for our public hearing feedback did not seem to offer any chance for feedback except to rank the choices, all of which were flawed, it seemed to me, in one way or another. So if I'm understanding right, the only way to make public feedback to, to the board of directors is, in fact, to um, go to one of their official virtual meetings, which is going to be hard to do since they're up in Fort Collins. And um, I noticed that their choices also included building a new fossil fuel-powered electrical facility, which seems to be not in keeping with our 100% renewable goal. So I'm hoping that Mayor Bagley, that you can, in one of the board meetings, call their attention to the fact that there's some factual things wrong with the four plans they, they came up with. My second topic has to do with Detlef Helmig's contract and my hope that you will renew it and perhaps even add a feature on it where the um, some kind of alert might go out on the days when the pollution is bad enough to be dangerous with for people with compromised breathing issues. I imagine you'll be hearing some more about this tonight and in the near future. Uh, so I'm hoping that what I'm saying will be repeated several times and that you're indeed going to vote to continue his contract. It seems to me very important. These two things having to do with facing the climate change and crisis that we find ourselves in. So let me just say that I'm very grateful for the work you guys have done both before and during this pandemic. I really appreciate all the things you're involved in and trying to make better for us. So thank you and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Blackburn. All right, next caller. Our next caller, your phone number ends in 593-593. I'm going to ask you to unmute. There you are. Do you hear us? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? We sure can. You may begin. Okay. Good evening, Mayor Bagley and Longmont City Council. My name is Beth Anderson, and I live at 421 Gay Street. <clears throat> I'm calling in reference to the issue of investment properties being used as short-term rentals in Longmont. I am one of the 12 permitted residents who own one investment property that they are renting for short-term stays. 
I've listened to the complaint calls put into council by residents who live in two houses on Spruce Street about a permitted short-term rental that shares an adjacent backyard with them. If you consider the topographical layout of these homes, the houses are on a steep hill because, because of the rise in elevation, environmental pollution travels across the fence more easily and the Arapaho occupants can see into the backyard of the Spruce Street homes. That hill was there when they purchased the property, and it's not going away. It seems that perhaps these isolated complaints are rooted in the regretful consequence of purchasing a property on a steep hill. Because whether there are long or short-term renters or owner occupants, the possibility of smoke and noise does not go away simply because you change the ordinance. Unsavory long-term renters in your neighborhood can be a much larger problem than short, short-term renters who will leave after a few days. Sound governmental policy is not based on or changed haphazardly because of isolated complaints. There is no current local data to suggest that the ordinance should be changed in the proposed fashion. In fact, your planning staff, the experts that you hired to advise you recommended expanding the ordinance in July and said it was going pretty well. Here are some stats based on the open records request I pulled. Since the inception of this ordinance 18 months ago, of these 12 legal permit investment SCRs, there has been only one code violation and there have been only seven police calls. A mere 18 months ago, you told us investment owners to move forward with starting our businesses as stewards of this city. We did so investing time and money to make our properties places that welcome guests and encourage tourism and spending in Longmont. We pay sales tax, we pay lodging tax, we follow the rules and we are good neighbors. Please consider actually enforcing the current code and allowing the third party vendor you have hired to complete their work and monitor compliance. Beef up the code with fines, hearings, and revocations based on number of violations if necessary. But please do not put 12 Longmont residents out of business in these trying times because of isolated complaints. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next caller. Our next caller, your phone number ends in 695. 695, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Caller 695, there you are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Um, thank you very much to Robert Cutler, 1830 Lombardi Street in Lamont. Uh, good evening, and thank you for letting me speak to you this evening. I have lived in the Lamont zip code for the past 11 years and have worked in the finance and investment field for over 40 years. I want to thank all of you for your work and in particular, your commitment to a healthy Lamont that is carbon free and powered by renewable energy. I am very excited that Lamont has committed to 100% renewable by 2030. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the Poudre River Power Authority, PRPA, in order to make sure that Lamont meets its commitment of being 100% renewable. As I expect you are well aware, PRPA has recently completed its integrated resource plan in order to plan for the next several decades. There have been enough changes that already two of the four scenarios have been deemed not applicable. This leads to one scenario which involves a new natural gas fossil fuel plan, and a second scenario that I and others believe includes unrealistic pricing and assumptions for renewable energy that makes it look unattractive. I think it would be incredibly unfortunate and prohibit Longmont from reaching its 100% goal if we invest in a new natural gas fossil fuel plant at this point. If this plant is built, we are either committed to a natural gas fossil fuel plant for decades, or it is superseded by renewables and then sits idle, thus having wasted significant dollars. I believe that renewable pricing and battery storage prices are coming down dramatically every year. I, for one, would be comfortable with even 90 to 95% renewable by 2030, 
realizing that last portion is hard to obtain. For these reasons, I want to lobby, in particular, Mayor Bagley, thank you, and Mr. David Hornbacher, but really all of you, to speak up strongly for PRPA to run a new integrated resource plan with our new current information and output. I realize that this is some work, but spending some money now could save significant dollars in the future. Thank you very much for letting me speak in support of Longmont, realizing our excellent, excellent commitment of 90 to 100 percent renewable by 2030. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, next caller. Our next caller, your phone number ends in 876. I'm going to ask you to unmute 876. Do you hear us? Hello. 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 Can you hear me okay? We sure can. You may begin. Great. My name is Ermine Nomir, 524 Flicker Avenue. And I, too, am um, a member, member within the Boulder County Collective and wanted to also communicate some demands because that's the world we live in. They're called demands, although we're not as um, strong with them, but we do want to see them happen. So thank you with that. Uh, so overall, study, we want a study that's commissioned by the city and paid for by the city that addresses race, gender, sexual orientation, equity within Longmont. And we want to focus around the areas of public safety, urban development, education, well-being, as well as economics and access to the arts, and lastly, more importantly, our environment. So what we've noticed of late is a lot of people are doing some great communication, great talking, but we actually want to see the action, and we need help with it, and we need that help that we've seen some other cities take on, even within Colorado, um, from you guys. The second aspect is uh, we'd like to see a downtown center for our youth and that has a, houses an advisory board, innovation and therapy rooms, innovation center type therapy rooms, maybe even some small event space, um, a small business type thing to help uh, people transition more into innovative fields. Third, uh, direction or support on starting our own nonprofit. And I actually think that's probably a gimme for this group as it's probably a phone call or two with some resources in this town on how we can start a nonprofit that really serves the larger community. And by that, I mean all races, all ethnicities, all na uh, nature of sexual orientation, um, because that's just something that we don't have right now. And it's really excluded uh, for some members of our community. And then we also want to throw in some disabilities as well. So really just making a place that truly is inclusive for marginalized communities as a whole, as that is the way that youth look at things, not so segregated as we have in the past. And um, lastly, diverse in, diversity and inclusion committee within the city that is to support all the other organizations out there that has some staying power and more importantly, some responsibility um, and is also truly inclusive We'd like that led by youth um, and very much at the forefront, people of color uh, and women kind of overseeing that. And then lastly, for you guys, an oversight board. And I think that some other people will speak to some other aspects, but that's all I have to say. And I appreciate you listening to my quote unquote demands. Thank you. Next caller. Our next caller, your phone number ends in 932. 932, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hello, can you hear Hello. me? Hello, we sure can. You may begin. Good uh, my name is Carolyn Towers. I'm at 1534 South Kaufman Street. Good evening, Mayor Bagley, council members. I'm here to again express concern regarding the traffic signal being installed at the corner of South Kaufman Street and Pike Road. The installation of this traffic signal is disregarding a number of local, state, and federal guidelines, requiring many exceptions to the code. In addition to, um, during the planning of Pike Road improvement projects, the city staff has not taken into account its own standards, rules, and guidelines with regard to noise reduction measures. 
As I'm reviewing old council meeting notes and videos, council members throughout the years have stated that when this road is developed, consideration will need to be taken into account to protect the characteristics of the adjacent neighborhoods and the safety of the current residents. Who are these current residents? Some of these meetings were discussing this topic while Pike Road was still a dirt road. Rainbow Ridge and Creekside were very new and Prospect was not yet developed. The current residents they were referring to were those that live along the north side of the road. People who have lived here for over 45 years were told when they moved in that no more development could be placed to the south of our neighborhood. The residents in older neighborhoods in town, although maybe not as affluent, are what built this city. People that worked at the turkey plant, built the homes and the street and the roads, et cetera. When we moved in, Main Street was all pawn shops and bars. There were very few restaurants and retail was nearly non-existent. We moved here before Longmont was quote unquote cool. But this city has been our home. We built our family here. This is where, sorry. <laughs> this is where we raised our children and would like to see our grandchildren raised as well. A lot has changed in Longmont, some good, some not so good. But you as the city council have a responsibility to the people of the city who have stuck with it throughout the years to retain the characteristics of the neighborhoods they embody. While developing Pike Road, all residents need to be thought of. Putting a traffic signal at the intersection of a local residential street and then changing the street designation because, oh yeah, we don't actually do that, is not in the vein of protecting and serving these residents. The standards, codes, and guidelines are in place for a reason. Traffic volume should be at least 1,100 vehicles per day for the designation to change to a collector street. We have not been able to work with the city for traffic mitigation because we cannot reach the 750 vehicles required. So why is our street now on the collector street mitigation prioritization list? This is one of the questions that I am still waiting to get answers on as the city staff has stopped responding to me. Thank you for your time and for listening to me. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Good night. Thank you very much. I do want to reiterate that her comments imply that Longmont is now awesome. All right, next caller. Our next caller, your phone number ends in 332. 332, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. <clears throat> there you are. Good Can you hear us? Yes. You may so begin. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Mitzi Nicoletti. I live at 1261 Button Rock Drive, Longmont, Colorado, 80504. I'm calling to support the renewal of Dr. Helmig's contract to continue our air quality monitoring in Longmont. I have found this information extremely helpful. And every day I look at it, it helps me decide when it's healthy to go outside, when it's healthy to exercise. Um, I appreciate the city of Longmont providing us with 24 seven air monitoring. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next caller. The next caller I'm gonna call on, your phone number ends in 492. 492, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me? I sure can, you may hello? begin. All right, thank you. Um, hello, thank you for having me. My name is Asha Romeo. Um, I live at 524 Flicker Avenue, uh, Longmont, Boulder, or Longmont, Colorado, um, 80504. My, I have, or I am part of the Boulder County Collective on the public safety team, and I have a few um, demands from us that I'd like to read. Firstly, um, right size our policing force by reducing police responsibilities such as dealing with homelessness, mental health, and truancy thus giving our men in uniform a break and allocating resources towards community services in a way that solves the issues versus criminalizes it. Secondly, shift police oversight board into a public oversight board where there's transparency to those on it and the issues that they are addressing. Um, why should we be so afraid of our own police as to need to keep those on an oversight board hidden? Thirdly, start instituting a culture of transparency as it relates to all police use of force or arrest. Um, all information on police use of force inside, 
incidences must be released to public within 21 days, especially all information from weapon discharge. Fourth, update rules and guidelines for firing a weapon. Fifth, release of high definition recordings and imagery with any initial or subsequent data release. Uh, lastly, continue developing a culture of transparency to include all data and reporting that relates to race, ethnicity, socioeconomic, residency, or residency status, uh, to name a few, and is inclusive of metrics on stops, arrests, and sentencing. Those are my points. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Next caller. How many do we have left? Three, four? Give me just a minute, Mayor. One, two, three, four, five left. All right, let's keep going. The next caller, your phone number ends in 545. 545. Hi, are you able to hear me? We sure can. You may begin. Okay. Good evening. I hope you're all doing well. My name is Alyssa Jenkins. I grew up in Longmont. I live in Foxhill at 455 Greenwood Lane. I'm a member of the Boulder County Collective, as a few of the other people who spoke before me are. Um, I would like to thank you all for opening the floor for discussion, and I urge you to consider the following demands that we came up with as a collective. Um, so firstly, a moratorium, a moratorium should be placed on all housing developments until the provision of quality housing for all of the unhoused members of our community is met. Secondly, given the hardships that have ensued due to the pandemic we are currently going through, Longmont should cease and desist from any and all evictions until the pandemic is below one transmission per person. As you are all well aware, the pandemic has created uniquely difficult times for everyone. And at this time, more than ever, we need to help the members of our community in any way possible. Thirdly, there needs to be community investment for BIPOC to combat historic and ongoing wealth extraction and destruction. And lastly, a minimum of 25% low income units and 25% moderate income units should be incentivized if not required in all new housing developments to better reflect the needs of our community and to help make sure that we do not progress without regard for all members of our community, which can quickly lead to displacement and in turn gentrification. So thank you kindly for listening and for your time. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you. Next caller. Our next caller, your phone number ends in 644. 644, can you unmute yourself? Caller 644, you're next. I'm going to go on to the next caller. Caller 781. 781, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Caller 781. There you are. Can you hear us? Caller 781. I see you're unmuted, but we cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. You may begin. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I've been meaning to get to these meetings for a while and I can thank my friend with the Boulder County Collective for helping me get here. Um, I'm with the Health and Wellness Department of the Boulder County Collective. My name is Erica Lee. I'm a Longmont native, and my address is 526 Kimbark 80501. For the health and wellness sector, I demand immediate allocation of significant COVID county and local dollars to go towards social services in long-term solutions that impact more than just downtown and go towards marginalized communities. Also wraparound medical, mental health and social services such as recovery cafe, reentry initiative and restorative justice for not only current but also the projected unhoused population and youth. And lastly, because the quality relationships and communication are one of the key indicators of health and longevity, according to the Blue Zone study, I demand that an empathy training, ironically demanding an empathy training for the community, as well as nonviolent communication courses be held publicly 
for ongoing maintenance for the highly polarized community culture we are currently a part of. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next caller. One minute, let me, they just reordered on my screen. Caller 977, you're next. Hello, Hello. Can, you, can you hear me? We sure can, thank you, you may begin. Thank you, my name is Delara Madinger and I'm, I live at 2200 Spencer Street, One Month. Dear Longman City Council and Mayor, my husband and I heard about the possibility of regulating short-term rentals to second properties. Even though we're extremely busy, I decided to call in and voice my objections. We just upgraded our rental property with hopes to rent it out for short-term tenants. We already invested tons of money and our own labor. The property is five minutes away from our house, and we have been working on it even in 10 weekends for the last year. Now we feel that the rug is being pulled out from under our feet. What a drastic policy change. Boulder County is one of the most educated in the nation. Have you used a scientific method in regards to this policy change? I took a graduate level policy making class at TU Boulder and would expect that you collected the numbers that drive this policy. One, what are specific objectives for the policy change? Having a quote, Nice and neighborhood is not a valid policy objective. Two, what are the costs to the community specifically associated with short-term renting? Parking and parties are not specific to short-term renting. These are present in rental and owned properties. Please verify the marginal increase, if any, due to short-term renting. What are current affected populations? And what populations will be affected by this change? Have you considered all those one-man citizens who collect cleaning fees and maintenance? And four, what are possible unintended consequences? Less business for restaurants and shops in one If this work was done, could you request a copy of the documentation as part of the public record disclosure? How many short-term rental properties are registered in one Look at that number and tell us with a straight face that this warrants drastic changes in existing policy in the time of a pandemic, an economic crisis, and dramatic shortages to the city budget. I will not even mention racial injustice issues plaguing this community. If you deny people to rent out their private properties on Airbnb, please tell us how this is going to solve any of your objectives. If you're truly representing this community, please do your job and provide thoughtful policies, not knee-jerk reactions. Remember, people do long-term planning, and need consistency for their livelihood. Thank you so much. Have a good day. All right, thank you. Next caller. The next caller, your phone number ends in 635. 635, there you are. Can you hear us? Hi, my name is Shaquille Dolal. I live at 609 Terry Street. Thank you. Uh, I'm calling uh, I'm calling in to speak in favor of the charter change from 20-year to 30-year lease maximums. It's a total no-brainer to allow the city to do the same thing every other municipal government on the face of the earth does and make long-term commitments to nonprofits like HOPE or city-owned entities like PRPA. This is a minor change to the charter that will help Longmont recover from the recession. I think every resident of Longmont should vote for this. Also, um, my congratulations to Mr. Victor Vela, Ms. Marta Moreno, and the members of El Comité. Do you have anything else, sir? Nope, that's it. All right, thank you very much. There should be one more in the queue, right? And he gets a redo or she gets a redo. Our last caller is 644. Can you unmute yourself and there you are. Sorry about that. that that's my all right. Name, my name is Kirsten Burris. I live at 1303 Carolina Avenue. And I wanted to just encourage the council to renew Dr. Helmick's contract um, for air quality monitoring. 
um, just to protect the citizens from harmful air quality. That's it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, that will conclude tonight's first call public invited to be heard. Let's go ahead and move on to um, the redo on the uh, uh, special reports and presentations, a proclamation designating August 2020 as El Comité de Longmont Month in Longmont, Colorado. And with us, uh, do we have Vic Bella? Do we want to, Susie, do we have Vic Bella on the phone? So I, he, I got a message that he is on the call. So if he can unmute himself or um, put his video on. Vic, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Do you see that button on your screen? I'm going to call him right now. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start reading the proclamation while you get him up to speed. This is a proclamation designating August 2020 as El Comité de Longmont Month in Longmont, Colorado. Whereas August 14, 2020 marks the 40th year anniversary of a tragic event involving two Latino teens in the Longmont Police Department that inspired the creation of El Comité de Longmont, and whereas Latino community leaders Victor Vela and Marta Moreno founded El Comité de Longmont on November 26, 1980, and began work with the Department of Justice to advocate for the rights of Latinos and improve community relations with local law enforcement and the community at large, and whereas El Comité de Longmont is dedicated to working with diverse populations to overcome challenging social issues like immigration, homelessness, and unemployment, and whereas El Comité de Longmont is a community bridge builder that promotes and expands self-sufficiency for hundreds of Longmont community members, and whereas Marta Moreno recently retired from her position as executive director of El Comité de Longmont after four decades of service, and whereas in his late 70s, Victor L. Vela, a U.S. Army veteran and co-founder of El Comité de Longmont, continues to act as a fierce advocate for Latinos in Longmont. Now, therefore, I, Brian J. Bagley, Mayor, by virtue of the authority vested in me and the City Council of the City of Longmont, do hereby proclaim August 2020 as El Comité de Longmont Month in Longmont, and I encourage all residents of this great city to congratulate and recognize the incredible work and contributions to the community by El Comité de Longmont to promote and advocate for social justice and racial equality for the past 40 years. Signed, Mayor Bagley. Do we have Vic back? All right, maybe maybe we'll invite him to call in at public invited to be heard at the end. Yeah, he says he's on the call and I, I told him to unmute and speak. And so he's I've asked him, I've okay. tried to do that. Uh, Council member Hidalgo, Faring yeah. and Mayor. They don't seem to be responding. Okay. Marta, can you unmute? I'm asking you to unmute. Do you see a button there on your screen? Yeah. There you go. There's Marta. Can you um, share your video now? I'm going to ask you to start your video. Oh, there's Vic. I'm going to ask Vic to unmute. Can you hear me? We sure can, Vic. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Okay, what do you want me to say? I didn't. I was... Hello? We hey, hear go you. Ahead. Go ahead, Vic. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. I apologize, guys. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. If you can, can hear me. You're, you're okay. Go for it, Vic Vela. Go for it. We can hear you. You're good. You're okay. Talk. You can, you, we hear you and see you. Go ahead, Vic. <laughs> Marta, would you like to begin? Begin. To do what? <laughs> we, we just read a proclamation, Marta, saying yeah. that you and Vic 40 years ago started El Comité and that you and Vic and El Comité 
just do so much for our community and, and advocating for Latino rights. So uh, we, we thank you for your service. We thank Vic for his service. And uh, the proclamation was basically to recognize you, Vic, and El Comité in general, and for the significant work you've done over the last four decades. So, okay. Mayor, Jessica. I have Vic on the line, and I'm gonna put him as loud as possible. Okay, Vic, what do you have to say, sir? Yes, and Mayor Bagley and uh, City Council mm -hmm. and Mr. Dominguez and the City of Longmont, I am honored for this uh, proclamation. I, I, I will accept this on behalf of all the other original founding members of El Comité back in 1980 and all other members that joined after that. If it wasn't for all, for all of them, it just wasn't Moth and I. It was, just, it was a lot, all of us combined to help make changes uh, in the police department. And I really feel so far the police department with what the changes we did has helped so far. And I appreciate that. And it's, I've seen the good, bad, and the ugly in this town. I was born and raised in here. And of course, the ugly and the horror was when those two Hispanic boys got shot. But other than that, uh, I'm proud to be a long runner. And again, I'm honored. And to be honest, shocked. I don't, I don't do things like this to be recognized. And it took me by surprise and shock, believe me. A 77-year-old man like me, ordinary citizen to get recognized, not only from the city of Longmont, but the state of Colorado, means a heck of a lot to me and my family. And Mayor Bagley, I appreciate everybody there uh, for that uh, proclamation. Mr. Bella, thank you again. Marta, do you have something to say? Yes, 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 yes. Muchas gracias. Buenas noches. Pass my bet none. <laughs> I really want to thank you, Bagley, and, and city council members, uh, Harold, for all you've done for this community. I've been glad being part of this community and, and enjoying uh, being part of the organization since its inception. And I decided to retire about a month ago, on the 8th of July. But Aburris will always be Aburris, will continue working. If people need me, I'm at home. I will listen to them. They can call me home. You know where I where I live. They can come to my home. Beverly, you need help. I can help you too. <laughs> Hansel member. It was really an honor to get the, the, the proclamation from, from you all and and the count uh, and the state also. And our our flag, our flag. Victor got the got the uh, United States flag and I got the Colorado flag, which was really an honor and grateful for my family, my husband, because without them, you know, a lot of times we can't do anything, but it's always been for the, for the passion and not to get recognized recognition, but it's our right, our responsibility and our obligation. When you're part of a community to come and work together. And I've been so happy that nothing has happened, you know, like other uh, states have been happening, having their problems that we are a community that can come and talk and, and be part of and help each other. Because we will learn from each other. We are, you know, we're not perfect. We'll make mistakes, but that's what we're about. So we are here to stay. And whenever you need help, I'm very, 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 very grateful for what you have done. And so I'm here to stay. And like you just said, we're very, very proud and honored to have been recognized in Muchas Gracias. God bless oh, you all. Gracias a ti, Marta. De verdad. All right. So let's go on. Uh, are we doing okay? Do you, let's go ahead and read through the consent. Uh, sorry, Council Member Hidalgo Faring. Go ahead. Sorry, Vic has okay. one more thing to say. Oh, Vic. Bella. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mayor and City Council, if anybody deserves an award, it's Martha. You figure 30 years. Like, uh, imagine how many families she has impacted through the 40 years of service that she's done to the Latino community and low-income families and immigrants. 30 years, that's a lot of years. How many, how many of us can say we've been on one job for 40 years? And how many of us can say how many families we, uh, that uh, she impacted and helped? That's a lot of years. I just wanted to recognize her for all that, Mayor. I appreciate that. No, thank you. That's a, that's a great point. Marta, 
uh, I would say thank you for all you've done, but I know I'm going to keep, I, I get messages from you all the time. People are looking for you. You ain't going nowhere. Sorry. <laughs> but we do appreciate what you've done so far. Thank you. Thanks, Martha. Thank all right. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to the consent agenda. Uh, Don, can you read that for us, please? Yes, I can, Mayor. Item 9A is Ordinance 2020-34, a bill for an ordinance amending Section 4.16.010 of the Longmont Municipal Code on allowable investments. Second reading and public hearing scheduled for September 8th, 2020. 9B is Resolution 2020-79, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the City of Longmont and the State of Colorado Department of Revenue for access to the Department of Revenue sales and use tax software. 9C is Resolution 2020-80, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the City of Longmont and the State of Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment for COVID surveillance testing of Longmont's wastewater. 9D is Resolution 2020-81, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving a fourth amendment to the intergovernmental agreement between the City and Boulder County for repair and remediation from flooding. 9E is Resolution 2020-82, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving a First Amendment to the Intergovernmental Agreement between the City and Boulder County for repair and remediation of the Peschel property from flooding. 9F is Resolution 2020-83, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the Intergovernmental Agreement between the City and the Colorado Department of Transportation for grant funding for high visibility impaired driving enforcement. 9G is Resolution 2020-84, a resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the Intergovernmental Agreement between the City and Office of Justice Programs, U.S. Department of Justice for grant funding for BJA Fiscal Year 20 Coronavirus Emergency Supplemental Funding Program. 9H is Resolution 2020-85, a resolution of the Longmont City Council urging Longmont citizens to vote yes on the ballot question concerning issuing up to $80 million in bonds payable from the city's water utility enterprise revenues to finance water system improvements, including but not limited to the Nelson Flanders Water Treatment Plant Expansion Project and replacement of aging water system infrastructure, including treated water storage and transmission water lines on the November 3rd, 2020 coordinated municipal election ballot. INI's resolution 2020-86, a resolution of the Longmont City Council urging Longmont citizens to vote yes on the ballot issue approving a change to the city's charter to allow for 30-year leases of city property on the November 3rd, 2020 coordinated election ballot. And 9J has approved two capital improvement program amendments. All right, do we have a motion? I will move the consent agenda as uh, read. Councilmember Waters? Yeah, Mayor Bagley, thanks. Just a question. Item um, 8I is, which I, I'm going to vote for, uh, the resolution to encourage voters to support uh, the charter change. Um, item 12, and I just had a, could you take off what the, the voting screen that you just put up, Susan or Don, whoever did that? So I can see my screen. Thank you. Um, item 10D um is the is the second reading that actually formalizes putting that on the ballot should we wait to pass the resolution to encourage people to vote for it until after we formally voted to put it on the ballot we, we can't we're not allowed to we're not allowed to comment once it's on the ballot is my understanding eugene are you there stop angry birds and come back to council meeting eugene That'd be Candy Crush, man. Oh, Candy Crush. Sorry, sorry. So I think uh, Councilmember Waters raises a good point. I thought about it, too, that until the ordinance submitting the matter to the ballot is approved, that we shouldn't be uh, voting on the resolution urging voters. So if you wanted to pull that off, uh, the calendar, uh, first reading, do second reading, come back, that would make uh, procedural sense. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull I then, so I'll adjust my own motion for the consent agenda. Do I have a second? And, and H. Oh, sorry? And H. Or no. No, no, I. Sorry. Sorry. The, the 30 year lease of property. Yeah. yeah. All right, do, do we have a second on the consent agenda or we just move on? All right, great. It's been, it's been moved and seconded by Councilmember Waters, or I seconded, and Councilmember Waters seconded. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 
Opposed, say nay. All right, Paul, I didn't see your lips move. Did you vote aye or nay? I vote aye. All right, so that, that passes unanimously. The consent agenda passes all except aye. Um, let's, I don't think anything's gonna be that confrontational night, so let's zip through ordinances on second reading. Um, actually, let's go ahead and take a five minute break and anybody waiting to speak for any of the second uh, ordinances on second reading, call in now and get in the queue and we're not gonna be taking breaks. So um, call in now if you wanna participate in the public hearings. We'll be back in five.
All right, are we all back? If not, we'll continue to wait. All right, looks like we're all back. So let's go ahead and move on to ordinance and second reading and public hearings on the following matters. First of all, item 10A, ordinance 2020-30, a bill for an ordinance making additional appropriations for expenses and liabilities in the city of Longmont for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2020. Are there any questions from council? All right, seeing none, let's go ahead and open the public hearing on ordinance 2020-30. Do we have anybody in the queue, Don? Mayor, this is Susan, and no, we don't. Okay, so then we will uh, officially, I will open the hearing, but unless somebody somehow miraculously pops on, we will uh, assume that nobody's in there. So stop me if for some reason somebody reaches out. All right, so um, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, can we have a motion, please? I'll move approval of uh, ordinance 2020-30. Uh, Second. All right, it's been moved uh, by Council Member Waters, seconded by, it sounds like Council Member Martin. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. All right, 10B, Ordinance 2020-31, a bill for an ordinance amending titles 4.04, 4.05, and 6.08 of the Longmont Municipal Code on sales and use tax, lodger's tax, and retail business licenses, and creating a new code, Section 4.04.105, for the purpose of enacting the Colorado Municipal League's model ordinance, as a model ordinance on economic nexus and reg, uh, economic cessus and Economic Nexus and Regular Session, August 25, 2020, page three, Marketplace Facilitators for Self-Collecting Home Rule Municipalities as part of a statewide sales tax simplification effort. Do we have a motion? Actually, no motion yet. Do we have a staff report? Don't think there is. All right, there are questions? Councilmember Christensen? No. Councilmember Christensen. No, I was just going to move that we uh, that we pass uh, ordinance twenty twenty thirty one. Public Mayor, hearing. Did you want to, public hearing. Yes. Uh, yeah, we'll go. Uh, we'll, we'll, we, we'll go ahead and have a public hearing before we vote. So, who seconded that? I'll second it. Second. All, right. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, there's nobody in the call line, but we'll go ahead and open it for public hearing. Slow line. Somebody texted me. See if somebody else is trying to get in. And it's not. So let's go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, 10C, Ordinance 2020-32, a bill for an ordinance amending Title 6.08 of the Walmart Municipal Code on Retail Business License. Any questions from council? All right. Seeing none, let's go ahead and open it to public hearing. Nobody's on the line, so it's just a matter of procedure. All right, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, let's go ahead and ask for a motion. I move sure. approval of 2020-32. All right, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, Councilmember Peck uh, moved it. I'm going to take your second motion. Dr. Waters is a second. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. Ordinance 2020-33, Section 10D, a bill for an ordinance submitting to the registered electors of the City of Longmont, Colorado. Actually, yes. Uh, a bill for an ordinance submitting to the registered electors of the City of Longmont, Colorado at a special municipal election to be held on November 3rd, 2020. An amendment to the City of Longmont Home Rule Charter to allow for the lease of city property for up to 30 years. All in fa uh, So let's go ahead. Are there any questions from Council? Councilmember Peck? Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Um, my one concern about moving this to um, 30 years is the contract we have, I think it's with AW to sell water to oil and gas for fracking. Um, I am against uh, having that be on a 30 year plan. I, I, I know that this is just to move it along. Well, actually this is so, so it's not saying that all leases will be 30 years. The, right. the, co the, the contract we have with A&W will still expire when it's set to expire. Right. But, but when we go to renew it, I mean, we don't have to even renew it at all. We don't have to do, we can do it for one years, five years, 30 years is just the maximum. So I, I just wanted to put my uh, voice out there as to why okay. I understand everything that you said. Thank you for clarifying. All right, perfect. All right, um, any other questions or comments from council? 
All right, seeing uh, Harold, you look like you want to say something, but I think I said what you're going to say. All right, um, let's go ahead and uh, open it for public hearing. Anybody else online? No, right? That's correct, Mayor. No. All right, we'll go ahead and close public hearing. Um, can I ask for a motion, please? I move approval of uh, of ordinance 202033. I'll second, second. that. Well, actually, I'll let my council member Martin second it. Moved by Dr. Waters, seconded by council member Martin. Um, uh, seeing no further debate, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, uh, the motion passes unanimously. All right, uh, briefly, let's go ahead and return to item 9i, resolution 2020-86, a resolution to Longmont City Council urging Longmont citizens to vote yes in the ballot issue approving a change to the city's charter to allow for 30 year leases of city property on November 3rd, 2020 coordinated election ballot. So do we have a motion, Dr. Waters? Well, I'll, I'll move approval. All right, I'll second. second. All right, it's been moved by Dr. Waters, seconded by Councilmember Martin. Uh, Councilmember Christensen, please. Uh, I don't actually approve of this, but I do approve of putting it on the ballot for the people of the city to vote for. And I object to the language that we have started using, or maybe we always used, saying that we are urging the voters to vote for something. I think we should just let the voters vote for it without us urging them one way or the other. I, I find that really odd language to use when we're trying to put a ballot issue on. Oh, I don't see anybody else. I guess I would just say, I think it's wholly appropriate to urge people to vote for things because usually like bond measures, um, we're usually taking action to try to convince, I mean, we usually need to get things done and pursuant to city charter and state law, oftentimes we need to go to the voters to get their approval. And I think oftentimes it's important to let people know that city council can't do it without them, but we think it's important. But um, let's go ahead, not seeing nobody else, go ahead and vote. Um, the motion before us is resolution 2020-86. Um, a uh, resolution of Longmont City Council urging Longmont citizens to vote yes in the ballot issuing approving will change the city's charter to allow for 30 year leases of city property on the upcoming coordinated election ballot. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Nay. All right. So the motion carries six to one with uh, Councilmember Christensen opposed. All right. Let's now move on to general business. 12A, Resolution 2020-87, a resolution along with City Council ordering a notice of public hearing on petition to establish the LFM Business Improvement District. Harold, who would you like to have present to us? That will be Tony Chacon. And Tony's at the bottom. Or bottom of my screen. I don't know where he is on yours. Tony, <laughs> go for it. I'm on mine, so. <laughs> okay. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor Bagley, members of council. So this item has been brought to your attention. It's in regards to the city's receipt of a uh, re request or a petition to create what is known as a business improvement district, which is allowed under state statute. Uh, it's also referred to as a BID, if you're familiar with that. Uh, it's being proposed for an area of the city, uh, a parcel of land that is on Hover Street, just north of Rogers Road and actually immediately to the north of Home Depot. It's currently vacant. Um, so a little bit about the BID in terms of what's allowed or not allowed. Uh, by the way, uh, I've covered all this information in the report and we'd be glad to ask, uh, answer any questions per the report, but give you a brief review. So it is, it is permitted by state statute. It was established as a means to improve uh, business, uh, the business environment in a particular area. The BID can be used to uh, make improvements, operate improvements, and then also can uh, serve to provide operational functions and services. So for example, they could do collective marketing for that particular business area. Uh, it also does have the ability to impose fees and taxes on commercial property. It does not permit the imposition of those on residential properties. Um, the BID is permitted in the state statutes, it's permitted under Title 31, 
which pertains to um, municipal powers and functions of cities and towns. You may ask, why is, uh, is this covered under our special districts ordinance? And the answer to that is no. The ordinance that we currently have for special districts is in response to Title 32, which is specific to the creation of special districts under state statute. So given the lack of having an ordinance that applies to BIDs, we are, the city is required to follow the statutory requirements for fulfillment. So basically the statute requires that upon receipt of a completed petition to the city, the matter has to be set for a hearing by the city council no less than 20 days or more than 40 days after it is received. So we did receive all the organizational documents and operating plan. And as of August 7th, upon receipt of a $5,000 deposit to help us cover some of the external costs with its processing, the applicant or the petitioner fulfilled the requirements under state statute. So given that, that's why we are before you tonight is to uh, adopt a resolution that would set forth the hearing. The hearing would be set forth for uh, September 8th. September 8th falls within the allowable uh, 40 uh, day limitation. All right, so do we have a motion for resolution 2020-87 or questions, Councilmember Peck? Oh, thank you. Um, if I could- Go ahead, Tony. Um, just to let you know, we do actually have uh, both Carolyn White representing the outside council for the city in attendance. And we also have Mr. Russell Dykstra who represents the petitioner. And he did have a very short presentation he would like to put forth to council. Let's go ahead and have that presentation then. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of council, appreciate it. I'll try to keep this as brief as possible given the hour. Um, the presentation was in your meeting packet. I don't know, oh, there we go, can be shared. Um, so if we could just go through the first two slides, they just give you a general idea of the area that we're talking about. Um, so you can get oriented on it. And then the next page, and I think the question is, why are we asking and petitioning city council for a business improvement district. Uh, as Tony uh, accurately pointed out, a business improvement district is just that. It's for business, it's for commercial, it does not involve uh, residential property. Residents are not in any way taxed for this. And it's a tool. It is a tool that is used to help fund uh, development costs and business improvement costs. Uh, and in this situation in particular, uh, if we go to the next slide, um, there are quite a few factors that made the petitioners say, we need some help with this project. Uh, it's just not working the way most normal projects work due to the extraordinary situation. And I'll just highlight those. Your typical project of this size, we've done several amongst the, uh, throughout the state and the public improvement costs average between three and $4 million for this type of a project. In this one, uh, we're looking at public improvement only costs that are in excess of 7 million. Um, I think more importantly, because of city requirements for dedication, we have 30% of the property is gonna be required to be dedicated for public purposes for a detention pond and a major artery uh, roadway. Um, that's a pretty significant loss of leasable and sellable ground in a commercial project. So that, that emphasizes again, the inability with the increased cost, also the inability to offset those increased costs with uh, more developable land. Um, and I think the, the bottom uh, two points are important in the current <laughs> environment where uh, with COVID and the Amazon effect that I'm sure you're aware of, of online sales, uh, retail projects, and especially with COVID, we're seeing a hesitancy and uh, difficulty in getting 
private capital and it's at an extremely high rate, which makes uh, these types of projects very difficult to develop right now. And the, the benefit of a business improvement district is it takes advantage of uh, bonding capabilities for governmental entities that will allow us to take advantage of, uh, we're, we're being told in the four to 5% range versus the private market, which is nine to 12% range. So, so those are the major advantages. And if we could scroll down, there's a, there's a, a comparison between Title 32 special districts, specifically metropolitan districts and what a business improvement district is. Um, I won't go through this line by line. I, I think if we scroll down to the benefits of a BID, uh, I've tried to encapsulate the, the distinctions. Uh, the primary one is a BID is only commercially assessed property. Uh, the minute any property within the boundaries of a BID becomes assessed as residential, it automatically by state law is uh, removed from the district. Uh, why is that important? Um, there are no residential voters within the district, so it's not going to impact or have a, an effect on the city's general bonding questions that you're putting forth to your residents and citizens. The, the voters are only commercial property owners and lessees. Um, so those property owners are made fully aware, especially in a new project like this, before they sign a lease, before they buy a pad in this property, they're fully aware of what uh, the BID is, what the obligations to the BID are. Uh, the other distinguishing factor is most metropolitan districts, once you wind them up and approve them, they're very independent. You may get an annual report from them, but the, unless they deviate from their service plan, the city really has no um, ability to work with them and adjust things over time. A BID is specific in that every September we have to come back with a new operating plan or a, or a continuation of the existing operating plan for the city to see what we're doing, how it's being done. It includes a budget for the following year and it allows the city to review it, comment on it, and provide input on it as well. So it, it gives the city a more hands-on oversight process. Um, and it, we've, we've seen that also with BIDs that they help with the commercial investment process due to the financing help that they provide, especially for more difficult projects. Um, the process is the next slide. I've just laid those out. Again, I'm available for any questions council or mayor may have. I appreciate Tony's help. Uh, and I know this is a, a new thing for the city and I don't want to take time unnecessarily, but I want to be available to answer any questions you may have. I've, I've got a question. Can we get the, uh, can we pop the, uh, are you done with your presentation now? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Thank you. Can we pop up so I can see all council, please? Excellent. I guess the only, the only thing I have is, uh, so first of all, let me, let me uh, state what I'm going to say by saying, first of all, I'm, I am completely, I'm a capitalist. People who know me know I'm a capitalist. I'm pro-development, pro-growth, um, pro-jobs, pro-economy. Um, however, um, this particular, I, I also believe that it's the city government, myself especially as mayor, to uh, facilitate um, uh, things like you were proposing, you know, to invite business to town, provide jobs, and, and just Longmont to thrive. However, I do also feel that we have to give people, um, we have to give all developers, and all landowners, equal access and opportunity. This particular piece of land, if you compare this piece of land to all the other developments and potential land or, or, or uh, locations in Longmont, over the last nine years, I have probably spent, and I think city staff has spent more time working with this particular group, trying to explore ways to use the property. And at the end, it never works. And so I personally, I'm just putting it out there. I'm tired of dealing with this particular piece of land. Um, so on one hand, it's our job to facilitate it, but at the same time, I don't want to see this piece of land back if we vote yes on this. Meaning 
if it's not our responsibility to, to figure out how to do a project. And we, I just, I, I personally don't get paid enough to deal with this piece of land. So I'm going to vote yes on this, but my patience is pretty much out when it comes to this particular parcel. Um, Tony, you, you raised your hand. Um, yeah, just a couple points of clarification from presentation. So in your packet, you would have received a uh, map showing the entire ownership parcel and then also a red line on that indicating the district boundary, which is the commercial piece of it. There's also a portion of that site that they intend to build a residential project on but that is not included within the district boundaries or the service area boundaries. So that clarification. The other point of clarification tonight is that the point of tonight's meeting is to set the a hearing, which is actually required by state statute. So what this would do, uh, a vote tonight would set the hearing on the matter, and then that keeps us in compliance with state statute. Right. I, and I, the only reason I said my comment was, like I said, I'm going to move it forward, but this comes up so often and it's a big project and we talk about it, we argue it, debate it, we take time from our families and other people who need our attention as public servants and it doesn't ever go anywhere. So my advice to this particular group is, Mr. Dykstra, you, your, 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 your crew, I hope you're good because I, I, I don't want to talk about this again during my, my mayorship. It's either this or nothing. Dr. Waters? So just to clarify, Tony, what you want us to do simply, you want an action to put it on, an, on the agenda for September 8th for hearing. If we have specific questions you want us to, about the project, zoning, anything else, you want us to wait until September 8th. Um, you can pose questions and get response tonight, but it's not the official hearing on the matter. The resolution before you tonight will set the official hearing with, at which time all parties can also have conversation on the matter. All right. I'm, I'm happy to wait till September 8th. I'd appreciate that, Dr. Waters. Councilor Peck? Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Um, I agree with everything that you said. About, the, about this uh, piece of property. But I was wondering if we could have a clarification on what the acronym BID is for uh, people who are listening. Business Improvement District. Okay. Yeah, that's obvious. Um, the other thing, Tony, um, does this property, and I couldn't tell from the map, does this go into our RSVP where we have the discussion about the split flow? Um. No, I see here. Probably not versed enough on that. No, this. Uh, you know that this area is subject to significant flooding. Right. As, as a result, yes. Okay. So the split flow channel is um, just down. It's just to the uh, north, north, of north of Rogers Road. So this does not encroach in that. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Christensen. Um. Thank you, Mr. Dykstra. You're a brave man. This piece of land has had a sign up for the last, since I moved here in 1989. New shopping center coming soon, it said for about 20 years. <laughs> so, you know, it's, a, it's a, an interesting piece of property on a main street, which has potential for giving us some really good businesses, but it, I, I'm sure you do know that it is a flooded area and uh, also there are a lot of people just to the north of this who are going to be unhappy about the fact that in your attempt to not make it a flooded area, you may be flooding their property. So it, it's, um, it's a difficult piece of property. And I, I, uh, I um, congratulate you for being brave enough to take it on. Can you, I, I can't see all of your the name of your company, it just says Russ Dykstra Partners Spence. It's Spencer Fain. We're, we're a law firm. We specialize in, in special districts and business improvement oh. districts. Okay. All right. Um, that's all I had to do. I think we should set up the meeting as, because that's the law and go ahead, move ahead with that. 
Do you want to make a motion, Paulie? Uh, do do you want to move? I'm kind of in the dark here. That, that's right. I'll move no, it. Somebody you else do it. You, I'm going to do it. You second it. I'm going to move resolution 2020-87, a resolution of Longmont City Council ordering a notice of public work hearing and petition to establish the LFM Business Improvement District. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Yes, I second it. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Dykstra. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Let's move on to the Boulder Air contract renewal. And so I think, I mean, not, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that we've talked about this a lot. And I think that uh, I, I'm pretty sure that we have a unanimous vote. I, I know that we've gotten lots of emails and I think there's a lot of, there, I don't think there's any controversy on this point. So, um, Councilmember Martin? Well, there is no controversy, I believe, uh, on uh, reapproving the contract. And I understand that we did get some uh, advice from the city attorney about the additions uh, to, in the amendment to the contract task three. But nevertheless, I think that we need to have some questions answered about uh, why these restrictions on publication and dissemination of the data have been introduced. I understand that the city may need time to prepare a response if um, Dr. Helmick is going to make a statement about his findings and that's fine, but it is not clear to me that these provisions as they're currently written can't be uh, used to essentially eliminate academic freedom um, by uh, preventing some, some opinions on the data or some new results from getting out of the city at all. Um, so I would, I'd like to go over those points because um, I just need reassurance that, that these are not going to be abused. All right, so, the, so I'm seeing Councilmember Christensen and Councilmember Peck, but it looks like we've got enough council members to have a, a discussion. I just remind everybody that, uh, that there's no, I mean, we can get our questions answered, but at the end of the day, we're gonna give direction and everybody on council's in agreement. So um, I, at least that, that, is my, that, that is my guess. I could be wrong if somebody doesn't want to review the contract, but um, it looks like Dr. Turner's here. Uh, Harold, is she up? Dr. Turner, do you want to go ahead? Go ahead? Good evening. I do have a brief presentation. And yeah, looks like that's coming up now. I'm Jane Turner. I'm the City of Longmont's Oil and Gas and Air Quality Coordinator. And I'll be presenting tonight on the proposed Boulder Air Contract Renewal, which staff is bringing before Council on behalf of the City Manager under Purchasing Code 4.12.080. Next slide. Just a bit of background on the contract. In March 2019, Council received a presentation by Dr. Helmig of Boulder Air outlining a proposed air quality monitoring program. Council directed staff to contract Boulder Air Services starting in April of 2019. One year later, in April of 2020, the contract was extended to August 31st, 2020. And that extension was made to account for additional time that was needed to find locations to install the monitoring equipment at the beginning of the study. Last month on July 28th, staff arranged for council to hear an updated presentation from Dr. Helmig summarizing the air quality data collected so far. With the August 35, 31st contract expiration coming up, staff's now asking council to consider renewing the existing contract. Additionally, staff is recommending an extension of the contract term from a one-year term to a 16-month term, which would result in the contract renewal beginning on September 1st, 2020, and expiring on the last day of 2021. This extension would simplify future budgeting and renewals by aligning it with the calendar year. The contract renewal specifies that the monitoring costs for the remainder of 2020 would be $116,211, and the monitoring for the year 2021 
would be $348,632. Staff is also recommending an addendum to the existing contract. The addendum has been discussed in detail and agreed to by Boulder Air. It details expectations for communications between Boulder Air and the city, and it also provides guidelines for reports and analysis, and establishes a clear schedule for those deliverables. We understand that council and some residents have questions about the terms outlined in the addendum, particularly those in task three, which is titled data sharing, communication, and public outreach. So I've been asked to quickly go through each of the five statements included in task three of the addendum, and I'll try to explain the city's motivation for including these statements and obviously open the floor for questions afterwards. Slide three. The first statement in task three is that Boulder Air will provide the city with written notice of publications and or public presentations wherein the city's data will be analyzed or interpreted at least seven days prior to release of the information. In turn, the city will notify the consultant of permission or denial within five days of request, and the city reserves the right to prohibit use of the data by any party, including the consultant, without the express written permission of the city. The city is requesting notice about publications and presentations that discuss Longmont's air quality data so that staff can ensure that the people funding this work, namely Longmont's residents, can be made aware of upcoming presentations of their data, and also that city staff can be prepared to answer any questions from the public or the press about those presentations. This statement was added because when city staff aren't aware that Longmont's data is being presented or what conclusions are being made about the data, it does make it difficult for staff to be prepared to answer questions about the presentations when we receive phone calls from residents and to help them understand the findings presented. Slide four. The next statement asks Boulder Air to inform the city of any communications the consultant has with journalists or media regarding analysis or interpretation of the city's data by the end of the day in which the statement is made. As a result of public interest in Boulder Air monitoring data, Dr. Helmig is approached regularly by the press and he's been asked to comment on his findings. Here again, the city is simply asking to be notified of statements made about Longmont's data so that if staff receives questions from residents or from the press as a follow-up to Dr. Helmick's comments, we have some knowledge about the statements that will have been made and it prepares staff to be on the lookout for news articles which may discuss Longmont's data. The next statement says, Consultant is an independent contractor and is not authorized to represent city's views or positions. Accordingly, consultant shall not make any statement regarding the city's views or positions on air quality, including but not limited to opinions, analysis, and conclusions about the data, unless specifically authorized in writing to speak about the city's views or positions. This statement was added to clarify that Boulder Air has been hired to collect and analyze air quality data is not authorized to express the city of Longmont's views or positions in regard to the air quality data. It's staff's view that the positions or policies of the city should be communicated by city council members or city officials. Slide five, the last slide. And this states that the city may from time to time enter into data sharing agreements with other entities to permit downloadable access to the data resulting from this agreement. City shall notify consultant of any such agreement and the consultant will share downloadable data only pursuant to a data sharing agreement between the city and another entity. Also stated here is that anytime data is transferred as part of a data sharing agreement, consultants shall notify the city. So that's a very wordy way of saying that researchers that want to use the air quality data are asked to complete a data sharing agreement with the city of Longmont. Now it may seem that Longmont's air quality data is already publicly available because it can be viewed on Boulder Air's website, but the graphs on the website are simplified representations of preliminary data and that data can't be downloaded from the website. If someone wanted to actually analyze the data and publish their analysis in a scientific journal, they would need the full set of air quality data. This extensive data set that is being generated by Boulder Air includes millions of lines of data, as well as significant amounts of metadata about each data point recorded. 
Boulder Air and the city of Longmont are in agreement that the full data set should only be made, made available to those who are interested in serious air quality analysis. So as a result, scientists who are interested in the data are asked to request a data sharing agreement from the city. And once the agreement is in place, the city works with Boulder Air to transfer their large data sets over to the researchers. To be clear, the city has no intention of taking down the publicly available website. This statement was added to the contract addendum only to ensure that researchers using this data are handling and transferring it appropriately. And that was the last of the communication statements. Um, as I mentioned, staff is requesting direction on the renewal of this contract. So I'll turn it back over to you, Council. All right, let's go ahead, uh, Marsha and then Polly. Only because Marsha was already asking the question. That's it. Go ahead, yeah. Marsha. Thanks, Mayor Bagley. Um, can you put the slide up with the first bullet point in under task three, please? Uh, so I understand the reason given for wanting the seven days of notification. Um, however, I do not understand the reason why or the conditions under which the city would deny permission for access to the data. I was present when the original uh, agreement with Dr. Helmick was being discussed in the very early stages. And one of, of the uh, essential points of making this investment was that the data should be free. Eugene, do you want to weigh on this? I, I understand this is kind of standard language. Mayor and Council, Eugene May, City Attorney. Uh, so we are just asking if he's going to be using our data, the city owns the data, that we be made aware of presentations in advance where uh, these presentations, as we understand it, are usually scheduled uh, weeks to months in advance. And so um, it's not, Dr. Helmick's data to do with what he pleases. The city is paying half a million dollars over the next year and a half uh, to generate this data and just wants to be informed about what sort of presentations he's uh, giving and what he's using our data for. Again, I ask, I, uh, you know, I have allowed that the city has a right to be informed, um, but the intent of this project was that the information should be uh, free for scientific analysis. Not, I mean, free in the sense of without charge, because if there's a charge for the data transference or something, I think the city is probably entitled to recoup its expenses, but that the city should put the information under wraps and only allow it to be published under, for reasons that the city approves, I don't approve of that, and I have not heard any assurance um, based on this language that the city wouldn't do that. You know, I could see, oh, well, we don't want everybody to know that Longmont has this problem with its air quality, so we're not going to allow that to be published. Uh, no, I, I, can't, uh, uh, I can't really uh, concur with that idea. Uh, and while I absolutely want to continue with Dr. Uh, Helmig's research and for, for Longmont to continue doing it, I think that this is a change in the intent of the project and a change, uh, an, an unwelcome change in, um, in the city of Longmont and the people of Longmont's understanding of what this project is here for. We're here to take uh, direction from council. The data is put up on the website in near real time. Uh, if council wants to give direction on modifying a contract term, you know, Dr. Helmet has already agreed to all the terms of this contract, but uh, that's part of the purpose of the 
agenda item tonight is to get council input and to make modifications as directed. Well, then I would like to move that uh, any denial of, of uh, use of the data or any denial of a presentation has to be approved by the city council. I was going to suggest if, if I could just interrupt um, Council Member Martin and Mayor Bagley. Um, I think staff is fine with that. It was never uh, staff's intent to deny the, the use of the information. Frankly, I would be fine removing the condition of a city denial. Our interest here was simply to know that presentations were going to be made so as to not be surprised when either the press or others were calling staff about it. And so if it, if I can understand the council's concern about that. And I believe we can make that kind of a modification to the addendum, if that is the general direction the council wants to go. Yes, do we need a second in a vote or are we just gonna take your word for it? Um, I can go either way. So you need a second if you're gonna make that motion to I, I did it, but I think council member um, Christensen was trying to second it. Okay. If we are modifying contract language, I'd like a little more specificity as to are, are you know, is this deleting the last two sentences? Is it deleting the word denial? Um, we're, we're here to take direction. The other computer just died. Um, so uh, I can't read it. Um, if if uh, Mr. Rademacher is willing to remove the whole paragraph, then I'm willing to remove the whole paragraph. Hold on, we have a we have an mayor, issue, I think, with mayors. Hear, we can't hear you. So the mayor is unmuted, but we're not able to Can hear you. Can you hear me? Time. Now All right, there we go. All right, because I'm like, shut up, everybody. So hold on, time out. So the motion that's on the floor. The motion that I will call on everybody whose hands raised. The motion that's on the floor was to instruct and direct the city man or the city attorney's office to put into the contract. And Eugene, you can put whatever language you need to. But the city shall not deny the use of the data without council's approval. Was that your motion, Councilmember Martin? That was my motion, and I would entertain a friendly amendment to take out right. the council approval. So it, it has been it has been seconded. And now we can go ahead and move on. So I apologize. I don't know. I guess I don't know how to work the equipment. Um, I believe it was Councilmember Peck first. We'll go with Joan. We'll go with Tim. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Martin, thank you for that. That was exactly what I was going to ask, but I want to go if you'll take a friendly amendment to go a bit further and take that whole paragraph out. I feel that if, if the city is going to make or have Dr. Helmig sign a contract that says he will not use uh, the views or the position of the city, that should be enough. We should trust that he is not going to do that unless we have somebody at every single one of those presentations to make sure he doesn't do that. We have to have trust that when he says he will not use the opinions, I, I don't know of any other contract either with Boulder County or the city of Boulder that has this kind of specific specificity in it as far as uh, making him give all, give the city all of the presentations so that they can give him permission to use the data or not. I'd like to hear from the rest of the council before saying whether I can accept the amendment or not. Is that allowable? Sure. Uh, well, yeah, although, although at any time pursuant to, to the rules of procedure, Councilmember Peck, Councilmember Peck or anyone can make a motion to amend and then we'd vote on the amendment. But uh, did you already say what you had to say, Councilmember Christensen? No, I did right, not ahead. because all I got to say was that I seconded. Um, I, I, I thank uh, Councilwoman Martin for bringing this up. To me, <clears throat> having run my own business for eight or so years and having created many contracts uh, having to do with intellectual property, mine, <laughs> and having seen how my father was, um, who was a scientist, was abused by this. Uh, to me, this is an issue of someone being able to keep 
their intellectual property versus signing a work for hire agreement. This is on its basic level, a work for hire agreement. And the only conditions uh, under which that is uh, allowable, I believe this is still true, based upon CCNV v. Reed and Playboy Enterprises Incorporated v. v. Duma, is that uh, someone has one signed it and two that they meet nine qualifications, none of which are applicable here. In many Europe, places in Europe, well, most of Europe and the United Kingdom, you cannot sign away your intellectual property. And I believe that this city should hold up to that sort of standard is that we don't force people to give up their intellectual property. There, we have a clear thing here where we are we are dividing it between Dr. Helmig uh, under um, Councilwoman Martin's um, amendment would be able to talk and um, give us notice that he's going to do a presentation. And then he is free to discuss the uh, scientific analysis of his work because it is his work. It is his intellectual property. He created this system. He created the machines, etc. But he obviously isn't free to discuss policy, city policy, because that's our job and the city. And I don't think he really, well, I don't know, Mr. <laughs> Dr. Helmick has never contacted me, so I don't know. <laughs> but I don't, most scientists are not really interested in getting into political policy or city policy. So to me, this is an issue of um, intellectual property and work for hire agreements, which are notoriously unfair. Um, and I don't want us to participate in that. So I thank Councilman uh, Martin for bringing this up. I do think that we all want to have, uh, we all want Longmont to stand for fair agreements. As Councilman Peck said, this is not part of the agreements with Boulder and Broomfield, which he also has. So um, I would still set, stand up for uh, Councilman Martin's agreement, uh, amendment, and also uh, Councilwoman Peck's um, am friendly amendment. All right, Councilor, all right, sorry, uh, Councilor Waters. Uh, thanks, Mayor Begley. I'm going to be just on the opposite side of both the motion and the second and the comments that have been made. For me, this is a work for hire contract. Uh, the, the, we're, paying, we're paying somebody a lot of money to collect and analyze our data. It's a, the taxpayers of Longmont are, are, are purchasing the services of an expert. Um, and and I, would, I would take strong objection uh, to, to, first of all, I think we're micromanaging a contract that we have no business micromanaging. We're in the weeds on this. And if we're going to talk about trust, we're making a real statement about the trust and, and our confidence and the capacity of our staff that we're going to get into this level of a contract, in my opinion, uh, to, to, manage, uh, to, to manage, I guess, what we don't, we don't trust about their ability to deal with, with the contractor here or the contractee. Um, this is our data. There is no intellectual property. That, and we, and we can debate the concept of intellectual property. If he takes our data and creates something of value, he's created intellectual property, but he's done it with our data, right? And if he does that, he ought not to do it without our permission. And, and if he's gonna share the data with somebody else who's gonna make a profit on it, he ought not to be able to do that without our permission because the taxpayers of Longmont paid for it. So, this is not, we're not an academic institution. This is, in my view, this is not about academic freedom. This is about contract management. I do have questions ultimately about how we arrived at a dollar figure. I'm going to support the contract, but I'd like to know how we got to these dollar figures. Is it deliverable by deliverable to be on schedule? Is that how we rolled it up? But on the issue of, of getting into the weeds on contract management, I think we're making a mistake. I think we're making the wrong kind of statement. I fundamentally disagree with the concepts laid out here about intellectual property. I'm just, I guess I'm just gonna say is, uh, my concern is the reason I said what I said in the beginning, this is a simple contract that uh, the parties of, I mean, the city, and why we are the city, but the, the guy doing the information agrees with the contract and why we're sitting here debating this, um, the questions that come to mind are, are we really talking about city council interests? Are we representing Colorado Rising? 
Or are we talking about environmental groups that want access to the information? This is our data. And, uh, and this is, we're, we're not, we didn't set aside half a million bucks to like just, you know, fund um, some, some research study that's going to champion a general cause. This is for the city of Longmont and it's our data. And I think that it should be accessible to the public. And I think it's great that, that, that uh, I think it's sufficient if the city council just says, we're not gonna deny, or I think it's okay if, if we're just not gonna deny its use or um, unless it goes to city council. Um, but uh, we, and I, in all due deference to council member Christians and this intellectual property all the time. I mean, I, I mean, people do work, patents, uh, research, um, it's, it's, this is not a fair, an unfair contract. Both parties agree. This should be just a simple approval and move on. But anyway, Councilmember Martin. Um, I actually agree with both arguments as someone who would be much richer, uh, if, uh, if, uh, inventors got to keep their own intellectual property, regardless of who paid for having it done, um, uh, the, you know, we have to uh, come to the understanding that intellectual property uh, is the property of the, of the person who funds it, not for the person who, from whose mind it springs from. Uh, and uh, in this country, at least a lot of stuff wouldn't get done. On the other hand, I mean, my argument is much more narrow because the original reasoning behind us entering into this agreement was to make this, is to learn this learning and make it available to the people of Colorado so that they can act in our own, so that we can act in our own defense uh, to force agencies to uh, clean up our air. So I actually believe that the data produced does belong to the city of Longmont and Longmont can license that data as it sees fit at some point. But I do not think that we should be able to deny the publication of scientific analysis. So maybe the compromise is to go back to my original motion and say, say that if the, if the city has a reason to deny uh, a publication or a presentation on this data, then the council must approve the reasoning um, and otherwise that the, that the uh, uh, intellectual property can be um, released. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call the question. It's not debatable, let's just vote. We need five. If we get five, we vote on the original motion and we're done. All in favor of calling the question and voting, say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, it passes unanimously. Let's go ahead and vote. The motion is to accept the contract directing the city, uh, city attorney's office to uh, alter the contract language so that uh, the city cannot deny uh, use of the data unless that denial is approved by city council. Is that correct, Councilmember Martin? No, actually, it, 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 it applies it, in paragraph one, it applies only to publications and presentations based on the data and does not apply to transfers of the data to another researcher, which is covered in later paragraphs. Okay, thank you for the clarification. All right, let's go ahead and vote on the motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Nay. All right, the motion carries six to one with uh, Dr. Waters dissenting. Thank you, guys. All right, let's move on to 12D, board appointment to the water board to fill a recent vacancy. Um, let's see here. Mayor Bagley, I think we yep. skipped 12C, climate action. Ah, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and do D real quick because it shouldn't take too long. And then my understanding was that somebody quit and we have somebody who wants to be on the board, right? Correct, Mayor. We got a, a resignation, someone moving mm -hmm. out of the city. And since you just interviewed mm -hmm. applicants, uh, Council Member Martin, who is liaison to the board, suggested we bring back those two remaining applicants of the three. You appointed one, which was Allison Gould. Now to this new vacancy, you have two other candidates you could appoint. 
One was Scott Holwick and the other was Brian Foster. Um, so Councilmember Martin thought it might make sense to just make an appointment now instead of waiting till end of the year. Does someone want to make a motion? I, I move Scott Holwick. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right. Uh, the ayes have it unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, 12C, Climate Action Task Force Recommendations. Harold, I believe Annie Noble's around here somewhere. Yeah, Mayor Council, um, Annie Noble's going to start oh, out. There she is. Hi, Annie Noble. Hi. Um, this um, is the first, before Annie gets started, this is the first presentation based on the feedback that we've received from the advisory boards as we talk to you all. She's actually going to talk about other steps that we're going to take but before we dug into more work. Um, and bringing you back specific projects and what that's going to look like. We wanted to get your take based on the um, advisory board's feedback. So this is, we're, we're going to chunk this in, in, into pieces. Annie? Thank you. Um, could you start the presentation? Mayor Bagley, members of council, I'm Annie Noble, Environmental Services Manager in Public Works and Natural Resources. And I'm filling in tonight for Lisa Knobloch. She recently had a baby. Um, tonight, we are bringing the recommendations of the Climate Action Task Force back to you and requesting direction on their implementation. There are several other staff members here tonight that are available to help me answer any questions that you might have. Uh, next slide, please. So I will start out with a brief background on the climate resolution, and then I'll go into the Climate Action Task Force and provide an overview of the city's greenhouse gas emissions. And then I'll go over the feedback that we received from the advisory boards on the recommendations of the Climate Action Task Force. And then I'll open it up for questions and discussion, and then ask council for direction on which recommendations you would like to move forward and the proposed next steps. Next slide, please. So in October 2019, Council passed a resolution declaring a climate emergency and convened a group um, of community members that are subject matter experts to put together a report with recommendations on how to address the climate crisis. This group was called the Climate Action Task Force. From an operational perspective, staff had been working to put together a group of frontline community members in order to evaluate the impacts on the community of the city's transition to 100% renewable energy. This group was called the Just Transition Plan Committee, and their role was expanded to evaluate community impacts from other climate recommendations after the resolution was passed, and this was specifically called out in the resolution. Next slide, please. Before we get into the recommendations of the Climate Action Task Force, I wanted to show you this diagram of Longmont's 2019 greenhouse gas emissions, which did not change significantly from the 2016 greenhouse gas inventory. And we'll be presenting this information to council in greater detail this fall, but I wanted to pro provide it for context for tonight's discussion. So as you can see, the greatest contribution in greenhouse gas emissions is from the generation of electricity. So this includes commercial, residential, and the additional equity share. So the additional equity share is Longmont's portion of the emissions that's associated with the excess electricity that's generated by Platte River Power Authority. The next biggest contribution comes from natural gas, which is divided into residential and commercial, and then that's followed by contributions from the transportation sector. So you can see that it's important to focus on the transition to 100% renewable electricity, as well as building energy in the form of natural gas and then transportation. Next slide. So the Climate Action Task Force identified 27 recommendations that fall into these six topic areas. And equity was identified as a critical component in all of the recommendations. The Just Transition Plan Committee developed recommendations on an equity assessment that could be used as a checklist for each of these recommendations. 
staff presented the Climate Action Task Force and the Just Transition Plan Committee recommendations to Council on June 30th and July 7th. So tonight, we are requesting direction from Council on how to move forward with the implementation of these recommendations. And specifically, we're asking Council which recommendations you would like to move forward. We're also requesting direction on staff's proposed next steps. Next slide. So at the July 7th meeting, Council directed staff to take the recommendations to the relevant advisory boards to get their feedback and bring it back to Council for further discussion. Next slide. So I recognize that this is small and I don't expect you to read this slide, but I wanna point out that it's in your packet, attachment B, and I will be referencing this in future slides, but it'll be at a larger scale. So this lists all the recommendations of the Climate Action Task Force and provides a summary of the board comments and how the board voted on each of the recommendations. So all of the climate action recommendations were presented to the Transportation Advisory Board, the Sustainability Board, the Parks Board, Water Board, and the Longmont Downtown Development Authority, but the boards only provided feedback on the areas that fell within their purview. The Sustainability Board voted on all 27 recommendations. Some council members also provided feedback on specific recommendations after the July 7th meeting. And these comments are all in your packet along with more detailed comments from the boards. Next slide. The boards were generally supportive of the Climate Action Task Force recommendations. However, there were several recommendations that board members felt needed further analysis. And I'm gonna go through each of these in greater detail in the next few slides. And I'm also going to highlight some projects or efforts that are currently underway that are related to these climate action recommendations. Next slide, please. So the first area that had significant comments was in the area of water conservation. And this recommendation was for a 35 to 40% reduction in water use. So I wanna point out in the column where it shows numbers, the numbers that are shown as board input um, it are listed as approved as is, approved with noted considerations and do not approve. So for example, on this recommendation, the Sustainability Advisory Board voted with one person approving it as is, three approving it with noted considerations, and nobody voted to not approve it. So while all the boards were supportive of water conservation, the Sustainability Board, Parks Board, and Water Board thought this recommendation is arbitrary and unachievable, and they wanted more analysis. The Water Board voted to reject this recommendation. They thought it was unattainable without having extreme impacts to Longmont residents, and they thought this level of conservation is not necessary given the city's raw water system. The Transportation Advisory Board voted to support it, but similar to the Parks Board and the Sustainability Board, they had concerns about how it would affect landscaping. Next. So city staff continue to look at opportunities to evaluate water conservation. Um, the city is currently involved in a water conservation project that will be evaluating the conversion of bluegrass to wheatgrass. This project is partially funded by Northern Water. And you can see in the slide that um, the image on your left is the service center and on your right is an area that's adjacent to Hover Street between Mountain View and 12th. And um, these photos are taken before the area was seeded with the wheatgrass. So it's before photos. And this project is um, estimated to reduce water use by about 50%. Next slide, please. The next set of significant comments are in the area of building energy use. And there were two recommendations in this area. Um, and the concern was around electrification. So the first recommendation was a modification to the building code to add electric heaters and electric hot water heaters. And the concerns were from the sustainability board and they were related to cost and equity. Next slide. The next recommendation was to create a committee to evaluate electrification. 
and the Sustainability Board had similar concerns about cost and equity um, and thought it would be better to focus on this when we're closer to our goal of 100% renewable electricity. There was some confusion about this recommendation um, with community members. They thought this was mandating complete electrification within the 18 month period, but it is just developing a plan within that period. So work is already underway with LPC to evaluate electrification. Next slide. LPC is currently working with Habitat for Humanity on a grid interactive demonstration project on 10 new all-electric homes. And this project will allow for monitoring the use of home appliances such as hot water heaters and electric heat. And that'll help LPC understand opportunities for optimizing the grid, as well as the cost impacts of having all electric appliances. Next slide. The next two recommendations are in the area of land use. Uh, this recommendation suggests changing the code to allow for residential agriculture. And this was reviewed by the Sustainability Board and the Parks Board. And while they were both supportive of local food production, they questioned the overall purpose and intent of this recommendation. They noted that while everyone growing their own food is a nice idea, it would take a lot of gardening and water to feed a household and thought that it was better to support local farms. Next slide. The last recommendation that had significant comments um, was to implement a pay to park in the downtown. And this was to encourage alternate modes of transportation. And this was reviewed by the Sustainability Board, the Transportation Board, and the Longmont Downtown Development Authority. Um, the Sustainability Board voted to reject this recommendation because they thought it would have a negative impact on downtown businesses. The Transportation Board supported the goal, but thought it was better to wait until after businesses have recovered from COVID. And the LDDA also indicated they would support this goal once businesses have recovered from COVID and once there's a more robust multimodal system, transportation system providing access to downtown. Next slide. So this summer, in an effort to provide outdoor seating for downtown restaurants, one lane of Main Street was closed in each direction in the downtown area. And this could also serve as an opportunity to evaluate impacts on traffic, which could help inform decisions around multimodal improvements such as bike lanes and dedicated bus lanes. Next slide. So following the July 7th council meeting, some council members provided written comments to staff regarding the implementation of the Climate Action Task Force recommendations. Those council members had expressed support of incorporating the approved recommendations into Envision Longmont and the Sustainability Plan and of the Sustainability Board having oversight of the implementation of these recommendations with the projects and programs being incorporated into the work plans of the appropriate work group within the city. Council members were also supportive of ad hoc committees supporting staff with these efforts and thought that quarterly or even semi-annual reports back to council would be appropriate. Some council members did have concerns about specific recommendations and had differing opinions about the public engagement process and the continued role of the Climate Action Task Force and the Just Transition Plan Committee. So at this point, next slide, um, I would like to open this up. Oop. Did we lose the presentation? There we go. At this point, I would like to open it up for questions and discussion, and then ask for council's direction on which recommendations you would like to move forward and then once we have direction on the recommendations, I would like to present a slide on staff's proposed next steps and get your feedback on that. Next slide, please. So this is a list of all of the recommendations and um, I just wanted to open it up for discussion and questions and get direction on which recommendations you would like to move forward. All right, I guess the, before I call on people, 
are there uh, specifically, is there any recommendation that people would not like to have included? Council Member Martin. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Um, the water conservation recommendation is, uh, was, was assembled with um, no quantitative research or supporting data behind it. And the uh, engineering ends of the advisory boards um, all pretty much said it's draconian and um, uh, not implementable and would impose incredible hardship on the city. Um, so I don't think anybody thinks it should be implemented as written. Um, the other thing is that uh, having sat on the water advisory board and the Windy Gap Committee, um, I am aware that Longmont is, has the best wa raw water system and is best uh, provisioned for uh, uh, weathering droughts and for uh, uh, making, making incremental gains in water conservation of any city on the Front Range. And I think that a need case for subjecting the public to hardships other than the ones that are recommended in some of the other recommendations that didn't get called into question um, would have to be made based on new data about climate movement or something in the area. So, um, you know, really we have a pretty aggressive water conservation plan in place. And uh, I would prefer leaving well enough alone on that one. Um, the other thing I would like to say is that on beneficial electrification, I'm not sure whether it was the um, task force itself or whether it was the reviewers of the task force, but I don't think there was ever any intention of implementing uh, ordinances against uh, um, existing use of natural gas until, uh, until uh, much later in the conversion to renewable energy in terms of, of the our electric supply. So what we would like to do is disincentivize the installation of new natural gas appliances now by uh, subsidizing, you know, finding ways to subsidize the installation of electric appliances as they are replaced out. Um, and uh, so, that, so that it's not such a shock when sometime around you know, 2028, we have to stop using natural gas because we can't afford to do it anymore. Um, so uh, there is in the renewable energy recommendation, a timeline for weaning the city off of fossil fuels. And I suspect that uh, using using that timeline rather than than um, pulling the rug out from under natural gas now would be better received by the sustainability advisory board, which I think is it's it's ironic that that they were the most conservative in terms of of uh, uh, greenhouse gas reduction measures of any of the advisory boards. Um, but anyway, I th I think that that timeline should be re-examined because I, I think from an equity standpoint, uh, they would be satisfied by that, that, that serious beneficial electrification doesn't come along until the second half of the decade. All right, thanks. Uh, Councilor Christensen. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, so Annie, and uh, well, thank you, Councilwoman Martin, again, for taking the lead on this. This is a really an incredible amount of work that people put in, 156 pages. <sighs> um, Annie, thank you. I know that you sent out um, a way to comment on this for city council. Somehow I missed that. 
And I would very much like to comment on almost every one of these, but I'm not going to do that tonight, thank God. Um, <laughs> so I'll just be, uh, but I do thank uh, Councilwoman Peck and Martin and uh, Waters for doing that and being good doobies. Um, I, I, in general, though, I think um, I would applaud everything in education and outreach. Um, I believe Councilman Martin said it's really just preaching to the choir, but nevertheless, preaching to the choir is important too, and particularly if they're in school and they're young and they um, really take this to heart and they know this is about their future. So I'm very much for all of those. I'm very much against everything in the land use waste and waste management, particularly the... Uh, wacky idea that everyone should start growing their own food and selling it at the farmer's market in competition with the farmers. <laughs> That's not going to happen. And I don't know, I, it's not going to help. But the schools, by the way, already are, they already do have programs to um, uh, work on learning uh, agri about agriculture, and I would encourage to do uh, people to do that more. However, places where um, school food growing programs work best are in California, where you can grow food all year long, not Colorado, where you can grow food about four months out of the year. So there's that to consider. Um, the renewable energy things I think are all good. They're all um, fairly technical uh, things that we really are going to have to do. We're really going to have to do a lot of educational outreach on that because people don't understand it. Right now, there is a whole group of people who think that if we install smart meters in their house, it's going to give them migraines and diabetes and cancer. And I, I think there's a room for a lot of education there about how we're going, what kind of strategy we need for the future of energy in this country. We can't keep doing things the way we've been doing it. Um, there are a lot of other comments I have, but I, um, those are my general comments that uh, I would like to be able to have a few, uh, Annie, send me that thing. And even if nobody reads it, I'll, it'll just satisfy me. You know? <laughs> but I, I do think there's a lot of good work. It's just that I do think that there are a lot of ideas here that are, they were discussed, but the practicality and the equity is not there. You know, it's going to cost a huge amount of um, money in terms of it's going to cost the builders to have to upgrade codes and have to do all sorts of things. And that's going to be passed on the people trying to buy homes. So we really need to figure out financially how we can do this in a fair and a um, gradual way. That's all. All right. The, uh, this is uh, Her Harold and uh, Annie. I guess the question I have is I kind of feel like I'm standing at the edge of the ocean with a bucket and I'm pretending like I'm going to be able to empty the ocean. And uh, we're talking about the size of our bucket, the color of our bucket. We have a lot of uh, recommendations uh, from this group. Um, there are seven people here who probably have all kinds of different ideas and desires, apart from the fact that we all want a clean and healthy climate. Um, so what do you need from us? So I think the thing that we need is, do you want to forward, forward all of these into the next phase? I think that- I, what, I, And I've heard some of these you don't want to forward into the next phase. There, there, so, right? time, 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 time out. You've not heard a motion, one single motion from council no, on I, anything. I, yeah, I'm just saying. So my, my point on this is, do we forward all of them? Well, right. Do we forward all of them minus? What council doesn't want to forward? So, That's so what how, we need how, to know. So, oh, great. So my, my list, the, the list, not my list, our list, our possibilities, is how many are there? The 27. 27. 27. So it's currently 1030 at night. And uh, unless there is somebody who is vehemently opposed to something, um, I move that we forward all 27 on 
and uh, just proceed. Dale? So, I'll I second could. that. All right, Dale? If I could add, and, and um, I think that works from the staff's perspective as well. I think we all do appreciate and understand that many of these are more challenging than others and will take far greater analysis and work in order to move from thought and theory to implementation. So I think that's okay. You know, staff is fine with that. And if we could just, you know, move now to sort of this next step of how we see this rolling out so we can check with you on that, then I think we can wrap this up for this evening. Uh, right. Council Member Peck. Thank you, uh, Mayor Bagley. Um, I am going to suggest that we put transportation at the top of rolling this out. And the reason I'm saying that is that we are going to have a budget um, process asking us if we want to fund free and local bus again. And if we are talking about paid parking uh, on downtown Main Street, then how are we going to do that? This is not going to be a fast project, but it's going to be a money project. And the only people that are actually working on this that I can see right now is the transportation uh, department, which is Tyler Stamey, Phil Greenwald, and myself. Uh, Longmont Advance 2.0 with Morgan Smith had a subcommittee working on transportation, but he's no longer with LADP. So that is kind of in flux. I don't think that transportation is something that we can put off. It affects all of us. It affects our budget. So um, I would like to put that as a priority on the list. All right, I guess, well, right now there's a motion. There's a motion that's been seconded. Um, so uh, uh, we can go ahead and vote on the motion. And then if you would like to make an additional motion, Council Member Peck, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So the motion okay. is go, go ahead and, uh, sorry, Annie, what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say that there's one more slide that goes through the proposed next steps, which might help inform the prioritization let's as go a ahead. separate let's go ahead. I conversation. Mean, let's go ahead and see the slide. So, okay. So what we're proposing is that staff conduct an evaluation on all the approved recommendations and look at the costs and look at the greenhouse gas emission reductions and look at the resources that are needed in the timelines associated with each of these recommendations. And we'll also look at the community and the equity impacts using the Just Transition Plan Committee lens and then bring that back to you with a list of prioritization lists for you to review that will group these into near-term, mid-term and long-term efforts for the council to review and approve. Okay. All right, great. So Harold, before we vote on this, I just want to say that we will be going over an agenda at some point in your office. And if the question is, so what's the priority going to be, you guys? I will kill you. Suggest us the priority and we will approve it. The key word that Annie just said was review and approve. Do not make us spend five hours on a Tuesday night arguing over which one of these 27 we're going to do first. So, so, so we're going to give you recommendations of what we can do in the short term. You have okay. everything, just, just, things we're doing now. That's so how just, it's just, be done. just give us your recommendation. And yep. then before we vote, we're current. So we've got a motion on the table. We're debating it. Dr. Waters. Thanks, Mayor Bagley. So just to be clear, the, the motion is to advance all of them. Yes, to direct staff to proceed with all 27 and, and, and return with a list of and priorities. The proceeding means to, to, to subject them to the scoring uh, index, I think, or that, that we just heard from Annie. Correct. Um, so for whatever it's worth, Annie, I, I, I said as I was sitting here, I hadn't seen the slide, generating my own, what I would, what I would compile as an index, impact, timeline, cost, equity, ease of implementation. Um, matches up with yours, except maybe ease of implementation. Do you have the do you have the capacity, talent, et cetera, et cetera, you know, to, to implement? Or you have to go outside, hire new talent, or whatever. And I think that's a legitimate skill score. But that's exactly what I think needs to happen, frankly. So if that's the motion, I'm going to support it. I just wanted to clarify. We're going to the next step would be subjecting them to that kind of evaluation. We get to see however you're going to score those, how they came out. 
after you've scored them. That's mm -hmm. good. Thank you. All right. So seeing no, all right, Councilman Martin, were you petting your cat or were you just? No, I was, right. I was, um, I, th I think that the, that I have a, a an amendment to uh, the scoring hierarchy here um, because some of these things are going to be very expensive, but they give you a huge greenhouse gas reduction. And I see Dale and Annie nodding their heads. So I would prefer, prefer the substitution of cost benefit rather than just cost because um, yes. you know, that, would do, that would do something that if something's really cheap, but it doesn't get us stuff, then we'd spend a lot of time on that. Um, and uh, on the other hand, uh, if, if you strictly go to cost, we might not advance toward 100% renewable energy, which everyone agrees is the main priority because all the other greenhouse gas reduction recommendations don't work until you've got 100% renewable energy. So with, I will, do I need a motion on that? I so move the, it. The, the, there's, a mo, there's, a, there's a motion on the floor. Okay. So let's, we're gonna, the, the, we, I moved and you seconded to proceed with all 27. Let's vote on that. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. say nay. All right, nay. the motion, the, I'm sorry. The motion carries six to one with council member Christensen opposed. Um, and as far as, um, and as far in Marsha, uh, go ahead and state your comment in the form of a motion, please. Yeah, I move that we substitute um, uh, cost benefit rather than flat cost as the top priority because uh, you will you will. You don't need, you don't renewable don't energy spend. is the most expensive thing that we have, and none of the other stuff gets there. Uh, unless um, unless we convert to 100% renewable energy. So, uh, you know, that gives us the biggest bang for greenhouse gas reductions and much of the transition is already budgeted. Um, we expect there'll be opportunity to win grants to uh, do some of the other work. So um, I, I just think that the, that the cost part of the equation needs to be a little more subtle than that. So I move that we make that amendment. I honestly believe that the staff will arrive at an equitable formula as they begin their analysis, but I'd like to formally sanction that. All right, if that was actually a motion to basically direct staff <laughs> to, to follow a cost-benefits analysis on all 27 yeah. of those items, I will second it. Let us Thank vote. You. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. All right, so Harold brings back a list of priorities based on a cost benefit analysis along with the, the, the items that Ms. Noble so eloquently described to us, please. Councilor Martin. Uh, one more question is that uh, I'd like to have a general understanding of what the staff intends to do with the ones that have serious feasibility problems. Um, I think some of these like the gardening thing uh, it wasn't an everyone must, it was an everyone may, uh, which is a whole different thing. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not too worried about that one, but, uh, you know, the water one, for example, I, I think we need to understand that the city has the ability to, to either replace or remove something that's entirely infeasible. I think the, I think the analysis will show that. As we're bringing all of these components in, it'll it'll start bringing that to the forefront. All right. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay, Councilmember Peck. Thank you. I am still going to make a motion that in your cost benefit analysis that we put transportation as a one of the top priorities. I have a second. I second it. Uh, okay, the, the, there's been a motion and it's been seconded. Councilman Martin? Um, yeah, can we prioritize decision making on transportation, but not necessarily implementation? The problem being that transportation is the lowest in order of greenhouse gas reduction. But it's also high on the cost benefit to the city. 
Well, let's see what the city comes up, what the staff comes up with in terms of cost benefits. So you'd get the same value out of prioritizing only um, the analysis and, and timeline. And, and, and Joan, I guess I guess I'm. There was a motion. I, I, I guess I don't understand the motion. Could you please help help me understand what it is you're actually saying that we should do? In a perfect world, give me an example of how you would change transportation issues in order to impact climate. Come up. I uh, have a either a task force or a committee working on. Hopefully, it would be through LEDP if Advance 2.0 continues to do this. But to have the uh, sustainability. Uh, going to 100% renewable, getting as many cars off the road, uh, charging stations, uh, all of that. How are, how are we going to implement that and uh, in a way that we can save money from the city who are we, we're putting in uh, thousands of dollars every year for local free bus? Is there another way we can implement that for a cost benefit to the community as well as uh, eliminating greenhouse gas? From. I guess, I guess the, um, I, uh, sorry, Annie, go ahead. So I, I do want to bring up that um, we're currently working on a transportation roadmap, an equitable carbon-free transportation roadmap evaluation that we're planning to bring back to council. Um, it's still in the works, but probably in October or November, mm -hmm. probably closer to November. So that'll be an opportunity to talk about that piece of it. Oh, good. I did not know that. Thank well, you, Ed. Will that Will that take care of your issue, Joan, yeah. for now? And then we can reassess? Okay. Harold, and say want, something really smart. Go ahead. I, I want to point out, this isn't a, we go through adaptation and resilience to building it. We move through these in a chunk. We're going to farm these out yes. to multiple departments. And so everything's going to be moving in parallel with each other. So I wanted to help yeah. answer that, too, in terms of a timing question. It's all moving at the same time. That makes sense. Thank you, Harold. All right. So the motion will be withdrawn, but only upon the understanding that it sounds like it's coming back anyway in October, November. So thank you, Annie. I'm glad you said that. All right. Let the record reflect that Joan Peck gave us a thumbs up. So, all right. Then uh, let's move on to final call public invite to be heard. Oh, sorry, Dr. Waters. Thanks, Mayor Bagley. I, 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 I think uh, we voted on an amendment on item oh, 12B. you're right, you're right. We never, we never voted on the contract. Yes, you texted voted me. an amendment to the contract. So yes. I, I move approval of the contract as amended, presented in item 12B. Thank you, Dr. Waters. I'll second that. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, the contract is approved unanimously. Thank you, Dr. Waters. Good catch. All right, now let's move on to final call, public invited to be heard. I'm sorry, yes, let's take a three minute break while we prepare to move on to public invited to be heard, final call. So be back in three.
All right, let's go ahead and come on back. Do we have anybody on the list? Anybody call in or queue? No, Mayor, not at this moment. Um, it's just clearing the live stream. Give us a few seconds longer. All right. Comments? Um, anybody? Actually, where's Susie? She's not back. All right, let's wait for Susie. And does, while we're waiting, does anybody have a problem? John Fryer is calling my cell phone. Uh, I'm sure he's going to want to know what we talked about in the executive session. Does anybody have a problem uh, with me sharing with him the next step in the process? Uh, give me a chance, will you, to... All right, that's fine. Me my phone. I've texted. I have a telephone appointment set up in the morning. Right. Uh, well, yeah. Well, after, 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 I'll call in just, just a second, Paul. Yeah, just after every executive session, the mayor is to, if there's a, if there's a, an announcement or to be comment, it's by the mayor and uh, he's going to want to know, well, what did we decide? And we didn't decide anything, of course, um, but I leave we, it. And yeah, that, that, that was, that, that's pretty much it. So if he's watching, there you go. We didn't decide anything. Are you sure he doesn't want the seven items because he also wrote and asked for that? Uh, he got those two seconds okay. after he, two se two seconds after he and Don requested it. I forwarded the email. Okay. There she is. Hey, Susie. All right, let's go ahead and move on to mayor and council comments. Would anyone like to share or enlighten us with words of wisdom, Councilmember Martin? Thank you. I would just like to um, remind everybody that um, there's going to be an important discussion on Thursday morning, um, a virtual meeting of the board of directors of the Platte River Power Authority, who is our electricity generation and transmission utility. Um, they bear a, a great proportion, although not 100% of the responsibility of getting us to 100% renewable energy. Uh, and I would like, I would encourage everyone um, to call into that meeting, prpa.org. You can find the instructions on how to do it. Um, and just see whether you feel like uh, PRPA is as responsive as they should be in implementing the city's mandate. Um, I'm sure that opinions will be divided about that. And I just want as many of the public as possible to see what goes down. And I would just make plans, not just for this meeting, but for the one in a month as well. They're both going to be pretty critical. So everybody pay attention. All right, anybody else? Okay, Aaron. Sorry, Council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Uh, so I spent the weekend down in Denver and uh, as you can imagine, that was an interesting experience. Um, it's, it, it was somewhat depressing in the sense that there was just this uh, overwhelming feeling of anxiety and tension uh, throughout the city. Uh, for obvious reasons, uh, I was there Saturday night downtown within a couple blocks of uh, what happened in front of the, the police department headquarters. And uh, just seeing how everybody is reacting to things and how people are trying to live their lives in Denver it was very interesting because there's definitely a discernible difference between kind of the atmosphere and the collective, I guess, community, you know, uh, mindset in Longmont versus in Denver while very different cities, obviously. Long, it was actually a, a breath of, a sigh of relief to get back into Longmont uh, early, uh, earlier yesterday. 
Yeah, and I just want to let the people of Longmont know that it's largely in, due to how well everybody's holding up in this uh, very difficult situation that we all find ourselves in. So I want to like I wanted to uh, thank the residents of Longmont at this time for for being very strong and resilient and uh, keeping a a pretty positive attitude for the most part. Uh, it definitely makes a difference when when folks are out and about and dealing with each other. So I just wanted to uh, give that observation. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor Pro Tem. Anybody else? All right, seeing nobody, let's move on to city manager remarks. No comments, Mayor Council. All right, Eugene, anything? No comments, Mayor. All right, uh, can we have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, great. We'll see us same bat channel, same bat time next week. All right, later, guys. Bye.